in accordance with the open meeting law, the board, the board states, for the record, that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. Thank you, everyone. Sorry, a little late getting to open session. We had uh, quite a bit of business and executive session to go through. So please accept my apologies. It's our first meeting of the new year, so I wanted to wish you all happy new year, everyone watching at home. We have a large group this evening. Um, we are going to go to public comment next, but I just wanted to let you know how this is going to work, just in case it's the first time any of you have attended a Board of Select meeting. If you'd like to be recognized, just please go to the podium. I'll recognize you, and when I do, just give your name, street address, and, um, and then try to keep your comments to a, a few minutes, if you could. We have a lot on the agenda to get through this evening. I know a lot of you are here for 20 Elm Street discussion. Uh, is Danielle going to be joining us? She's unable to join us this evening. Really? So you got it? I, Ooh, that's a lot of pressure on you. It now. is. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing we got reviews coming up. Um, <laughs> So uh, that's how it's going to work. This is a very relaxed environment, so no one has to feel like it has to be super formal. Um, but it's a friendly environment, and we're going to try to keep all our comments in a friendly tone if we could. Uh, is anyone here for public comment? Please. Hi, my name is Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz and I live at Tugelis Drive. I have previously submitted an environmental impact letter regarding the proposal for a project at 20 Elm Street. Uh, the letter that I submitted today in hard copy has been co-signed to date by 643 other people. Um, rather than read it tonight, I would, because it's three pages long, I would ask that it be placed into the public record. But these are my comments for this evening. 20 Elm Street is a very vulnerable parcel for development because it contains substantial wetland as well as seasonally flooded riverfront land. It is a downhill site that already drains runoff from Route 62 as well as the upslope golf course. Drainage occurs through groundwater as well as visible stream beds and surface flows. With development, there would be a loss of water absorption on the property due to the presence of buildings and paving. This could cause significant concern for erosion and damage to the land, river, and abutters properties. There are also issues of contaminants generated on the developed property due to vehicle oils and other substances. Perhaps more important, Probably more important is the invisible issue of contamination of groundwater and river water through generation of a high volume of wastewater. The application cites greater than 35,000 gallons per day. The developer notes that each unit would have a clothes washer and dryer and there would be no incentives to conserve water. Because there is no possibility of sewerage, an in-ground system will be required. Septic type systems have been shown to process bacteria, but they do not address nitrogen, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, heavy metals, and other contaminants. And I can provide a recent reference as well as follow up from this meeting if you like. In 2016, the Supreme Judicial Court upheld a ruling that stows acceptance of a septic type in ground wastewater proposal for a 40B project one that complied with state regulations was unreasonable because the local need for affordable housing did not outweigh the health concerns of ex existing abutters. This decision was based on studies that showed light nitrogen levels were likely to be excessive in abutters well water if the project were built. Linfield is a current existing abutter drawing well water. There are also homes drawing well water 
Peabody is a, a butter of 51,000 people that just recently finished construction of a new water pumping station about one half mile downstream of the parcel. There are also homes just over the line in Middleton that are obligate well water homes. They do not have access to town water. In 2016, a 40B proposal was withdrawn in Carver, Tall Pines, a proposal for 39 units, not 200 because it also required an obligate septic unit that was viewed by the town over extended reviews and revisions as outweighed by a public health risk to local water sources. Another point specific to us in North Reading are sightings by neighbors of the parcel of American bitterns, the endangered species of bird found upriver of the parcel in the mid-1980s, and these sightings are as recent as last summer. Anecdotal reports also suggest that other endangered species may be proximal to or on site at 20 Elm, which emphasizes the richness of this stretch of the river as well as the liability of development. <coughs> Last, the Ipswich River is not just a waterway. It is a major river that is the backbone of a watershed that serves over 300,000 people, including the towns of Linfield, Middleton, Peabody, all the way through to Ipswich. The Ipswich River was the third most endangered river in the United States in 2003, <coughs> but it has responded to restoration efforts since then with millions of dollars by the state, towns, and nonprofits. Contamination now could affect the length of Essex County. It could lead to a regional environmental crisis. Contamination or erosion or other river damage would undercut the state priorities that have led to the formation of restoration plans and all of the funds spent to date. Flooding is already an issue directly downstream in both Middleton and Peabody before adding wastewater generation and further inputs. Thus, this is a town issue, but it is far, far more. It is a regional and possibly a full state issue if cleanup funding becomes necessary. The people who co-signed the letter that I researched over the course of a month did so because the greater community realizes the treasure <coughs> that is the Ipswich and the danger that lies in damaging it and our water and possibly our health. Please use your voices to help the state realize they need to investigate this parcel and proposal critically and with due diligence, including the proper timing in terms of season for species and for water and river conditions. I have lived in North Reading since 1993. I have benefited from a community that supports diverse persons, including those with disability, which includes my son and myself. I have been proud of this town's efforts to support all of its people through development of convenient and appropriate affordable housing. And in the same way, I have watched the promise of environmental awareness and cleanup become reality with the building and blossoming of Ipswich River Park. But today, it falls to all of us whether we continue to build a positive legacy or we allow something that might be both sorrowful and avoidable to come to us, our children, and our grandchildren. Please help me, please help us, to help ourselves and all those who could not come tonight to speak for themselves. Thank you. Thank you. So I, I just want to make sure everyone's clear. Tonight is not a public hearing. I appreciate the comments. I think they're valuable, very valuable comments and feedback. And you can certainly leave whatever you like for us to submit to the record. We would certainly do that. Um, but thank you. I just want to make sure it's clear because I don't want to leave the impression that this is a public hearing. I knew it was Out wasn't. of respect to anyone on, on, the, um, on the development side. You know, we welcome 40B projects in the town of North Reading. We always have. We want to work uh, friendly with that developer and not make this into a, uh, a public hearing tonight to, out of fairness. And this has nothing to do for me with housing, it has everything to do sure. with that particular parcel on that river. <coughs> and I agree and with that's everything the you point said. I wanted to make tonight. Thank you, it was very valuable. I will take one more public comment related to 20 Elm, if there is one. Mrs. Spilly.
Thank you, Chairman Prisco, and to the other members of the board. I'll be very brief here. Um, we should absolutely meet our 40B obligations, but we should do it in a way that is consistent with existing development patterns in the town and with the needs of the people who would live in that 40B. Uh, when this was proposed, I wanted to learn more about the process, and so I did some research about the 40B um, approval process through Mass Housing, and I read the, um, that there is a thorough 2011 handbook called An Approach to 40B Design Review, and that was signed by the Director of Mass Housing and other agencies, as well as the, an Undersecretary of the DHCD, and it provides guidance to determine, and I'm going to quote the law here, that the conceptual project is generally appropriate for the site using regulations in force in 760 CMR 56.04 Section 4 Section C. When I looked at this, um, I also looked at the sustainable development principles propagated by the state and the, the checklist, which I do have here from the handbook that I just referenced. And that review in this checklist um, includes categories to assess whether the proposed use, the conceptual plan, the building massing, the environmental factors, and the topography are within regulations and whether they integrate with adjoining properties. If mass housing follows its own checklist, it's likely to find the answer is at minimum more discussion is needed, and more discussion is an option on the checklist, aside from straight approval. Also on page 22 of the handbook, there's a checklist for design options of integration into the existing development patterns in categories like relation to surrounding structures and public spaces, scale, and height. Mass housing on this page can deem the design acceptable, not addressed, or unacceptable. It would appear that five stories and 65 feet tall buildings that are barely set back from property lines of abutters and along the Ipswich River, the answer might very well be unacceptable. And now, if you'll indulge me, I'll just read a short section of that law, 7, 760 CMR 56.04, that I refer to, because I think it's important in when we get feedback from mass housing. And that section says um, that mass housing needs to evaluate that the conceptual project design is generally appropriate for the site on which it is located, taking into consideration factors that may include proposed use, conceptual site plan, building massing, topography, environmental resources, and integration into existing development patterns. And importantly, stated right within the law says such findings with supporting reasoning should be set forth in reasonable detail as part of the decision. So I do hope when Mass Housing issues its decision, be it in favor or opposed, that they provide the town with the detail that's required in this section of the regulation. So I urge the town uh, representatives to work with Mass Housing to make sure that we understand their decision with the appropriate reasoning and um, that they prove that it meets their very own criteria. Thank you. No, thank you, that was great. <laughs> That was page 22, right? You said that was page 22? 20 and 22. Thank you. I believe 23. Yeah. Oh, that would be good. <coughs> Thanks. Anyone else for public comment? Please, to the podium. I just have a question first. Uh, you have to do the podium and state your name and address, please, sir. I'm sorry. Just because the folks at home, if you don't go to the microphone, they can't hear you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm not really clear on what the process is now. I know that you are listening to a lot of comments, but uh, I'm wondering, uh, you have to prepare a letter, the planning board, weighing in on this home street development. Is that correct? Mr. Gilbert? Through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, so the town had received notice of the filing by the developer for um, the site to be designated as eligible by Mass Housing, which is a state agency. The town was asked to provide comment uh, through the open comment process that closes this week and this evening the select board is going to be presented the town's comment in its draft form prior to it being sent. I see. Okay. Uh, if, can you just dog me to make a couple comments? Uh, again, let me first introduce you, myself. Sure. Uh, John Felix. I live on 11 Judas Drive in North Reading. Uh, I've been here for about 30 years. <clears throat> I want to um, uh, also echo the comments that Catherine made uh, about some of the environmental concerns uh, that we should have with this project. Uh, she mentioned nitrogen a couple times. Phosphorus is probably more of a threat to the freshwater wetlands here than nitrogen is. Um, 
I should say that I did work, I have worked for the DEP uh, for about 36 years before I retired. At one point, I was the uh, Ipswich River Basin team leader uh, coming up for an uh, assessment report for the river. That was published in 2002. And um, I've also been the, uh, the MEPA uh, representative for the, the department. So I guess what I'm saying is I am very familiar with the Ipswich River. And I can say unequivocally that this project would be a disaster for that river. Uh, the river is now in better shape than it was uh, back in 2002 when the assessment report was, was published. Um, this project could easily set us back. All the efforts, all the good efforts that North Reading has made to make that river better, all the good efforts that EPA with their funding and also the, the DEP have done uh, have removed this river as one of the ten most threatened in the country. It is still on the brink and this is the type of project that could bring it over that. Now as I understand it, this site is currently zoned for ten single family homes and that would be what 30 plus people it would be supporting. With this project it would be close to the 400. 350, 400 people. This site cannot do that, in my opinion, without damaging the Ipswich River. Um, to have a sewage treatment plant that would accept up to 35,000 gallons of water a day within a couple hundred feet of this river makes no sense to me. And I think that will require a state permit, anything over 10,000 gallons would. And uh, myself and I'm sure other people will be looking very carefully at the design of that. Um, if you could just besides, wrap up, if you could just get, wrap up your okay. comments, I'd F really appreciate it. Finally, um, the thing that really kind of upsets me a bit, uh, that had nothing to do with the environment, uh, the Ipswich in this case, would be there's a plan to address the affordable housing that North Reading, they accepted a, a $15,000 grant for, they worked very hard, and they developed a plan that's reasonable, they, they, they weighed all the, uh, they, they debated the, the impacts. You had all the stakeholders involved. You had a large meeting. And you have a plan that makes sense. That was actually funded by the same agency, or sister agency, of this 40B program. It makes no sense to me that they would fund this project. We'd spend a lot of time, effort, and money coming up with a, with a plan. And then they come in and say, disregard the plan. That's what they're asking you to do, disregard the plan. And I do realize that mass housing has no choice. That plan was accepted, they have to deal with it. But I think what they'll be looking for you folks to is give them an indication of how you really feel about this. And if they get any hint at all that you may like this project because of the revenue it's going to generate or it deals, picks away the uh, affordable housing issue in the town, if they get any, any indication of that at all well, from we, we have it on the agenda this evening. We're going to go through our comments, and you can certainly listen in. Okay. And, and if there's an opportunity, uh, I can allow for a few questions, I will. But uh, I think you need to just give us the opportunity to go through the process this evening. I think we, we all in agreement with you. There's certainly we worked very hard on that uh, housing production plan. I'm a big believer in it. Um, and it's unfortunate that, you know, 40B um, planning is kind of an interesting term because it kind of goes against planning altogether. And you know, 40B is very important to the communities, and we all need it. And we have a good plan. I wish we could execute to that plan. But to allow this, you know, the, the process we're in, without planning, there's no planning. We never saw this coming um, is part of the challenge with it. But we're going to go through the comments tonight. It's on the agenda. So if I, you right. could allow us to get to that, I would appreciate it. Okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to finish up. Uh, thank you very much. I would hope that you would express outrage in your letter. <laughs> make, if you need help writing it, let me know. Uh, uh, because that's well, what Mass again, Housing we're has gonna, to do. We're going to go through it this evening. Thank and you. you certainly uh, will hear in uh, detail how we're going to go about it. Um, what I'd like to do now is go to, unless there's any other public comment not related to 20L. Uh, we're going to go through the board member reports, if we have any, Mr. O'Leary. I think we're good, Mr. Macero, will report on the uh, wastewater, water wastewater. Please. Uh, we did have a wastewater meeting as we continue to move this thing forward. Uh, we've been informed based on the changes that were made to the original DEIR that there are a number of questions that they're asking, uh, which really go back to uh, 
require the town of Andover to answer, okay. and we're establishing that communication. Our next meeting will be in a couple of weeks. I assume Andover's back to normal a little bit now that the gas. I'll have to defer. The town administrator has been <laughs> reaching out. My understanding is that they they are expected to be at that point in time. I haven't confirmed that with them yet, but that's where they expected to be. It's important that we try to respond to these questions soon. But no, Andover's got to play a big role as far as yeah. uh, Good. what we've reported. Anything else? I have one additional thing. Uh, at this point, to my fellow board members, I want to let everybody know that I will not be uh, running for re-election this year. Uh, I want to thank all of the board members present and past that I've worked with for their support and help. And I'd like to thank the community that has supported me through the last 15 years as a member of the Board of Selectmen. I bring it up now, Michael, primarily because on January 22nd, the town clerk will be announcing that uh, she is open to uh, those that want to run for any uh, open term or those that are up for re-election to collect uh, their paperwork and move forward. So uh, if anybody that is interested in filling my vacant seat, I'd be happy to sit down with you and have a discussion about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Messeri. Thank you for all your years of service. You certainly will be missed in this town, and but you're going to be with us until uh, May, and I'm sure we'll have plenty of opportunity to thank you appropriately for all the years you put in to the thank community. You, just, that's just going to be a massive loss for us on the board and in terms of history you come with, the uh, expertise you give us in terms of everything we're <coughs> covering. And uh, I definitely appreciate all the assistance you've given me on the board. And I know we'll have a chance to sing your praises later, but that's a, that'll be a huge, huge role, huge, huge shoes to fill. And we, we should mention Angela's cookies, too. You don't <laughs> <laughs> cookies, yeah. I'm sure she'll, yeah. <laughs> we should thank Mrs. Mosseri. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you want me to come back to you? Or you? Yeah, sure. Just a, a, a brief comment. It's only been about 46 years or so, 47 mm -hmm. years and, that uh, I've been able to share uh, some of the uh, duties with Mr. Mosseri, whether it be on the Hillview Commission or here on this board, and uh, work with Bob, who's on the school committee and finance committee, and uh, very few people that I know uh, have committed so much and given so much to the community as Bob has. And you know, as far as I was concerned, chairman for life for whatever he was, uh, whatever committee he was on, because he he always kept us focused and kept us moving forward. And, uh, and you know, I, I got a little hit there. He says he's just announcing that he's not going to be running for re-election this year. So <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, <laughs> what tells him. Maybe there's an opportunity <laughs> later on. But it, you know, uh, we know Bob is not going to. Uh, I think you better talk to my wife. You Steve. better talk to your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, there'll be plenty of time uh, later on to, to uh, talk a little bit more about what Bob has given to the community. But it's uh, um, it, it's it's good that you're letting people know early so they can plan if they want to run. That's that's a good thing. And uh, again, I look forward to continuing out the rest of your term here and serving with you. When we you have an awful lot of work to do between now and May, so <laughs> you better get you better get cracking. We'll have to double up the meetings. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is in your belt. I'll say. So I have a few things this evening. Uh, the first thing is I wanted to let the board know, and everyone listening at home and everyone in the crowd, I did use that new WaterSmart um, portal that we created for the town. So if you've had your new meters installed, I encourage you to go to the town website and click on the water. It's called WaterSmart. And the portal is amazing. And you put in your account number and your customer ID. And you, you create your, put your email address in there, you throw a password in, and you have access to your water by the moment, by the day, by the hour, by the minute, by the week, by the month, by the year. So I literally can show my daughter when she's in the shower how many <laughs> gallons of water she is consuming. Um, and it really worked. And, um, and I really encourage the community to go out and do that. If you really want to cons uh, have, if you have a concern about water consumption or even have a concern about your water bills, 
We've made this significant investment in these new water meters and they are fantastic. So you can get the information on a moment's notice and you can manage your bills and you can manage your water. And if you, you care about the environment enough, you can try to come up with some uh, systems internally in your home to conserve the water. Um, the other thing I wanted to go along with, Mr. Masseri and I are both up for re-election this year. Um, and I've elected I'm not going to run for re-election either. It's been nine years. It's been a long run, um, and I just think the community, it's due for a change. I think the community on this board needs a change, uh, and I'm looking forward to focusing on my businesses and my family. And so I wanted to, as long with, along with Mr. Masseri, notify the community that I won't be seeking re-election early enough. So many folks, I please, I hope many of you folks will uh, reach out to Mr. Masseri and myself so we could talk to you and encourage you to run. The community can't run without changing on this board. Um, and it's good, it's healthy for the town, and so I, I hope folks listening at home, our keyboard warriors out there on social media, I hope you really consider um, pulling papers on the 22nd of January. Uh, the community needs you, we need fresh faces, we need young and old, experiences of all different kinds, environmental people, people with administrative backgrounds, anything works on this board. If you have an open mind, you're willing to communicate, um, and the administration has really, really come a long way in this town since I've been here in the nine years. Um, and the, Mr. Gilberto has a great team. He's constructed a great team. And so um, I'm sad I'm going to be leaving a little bit. I will miss it, but I'm also looking forward to all the other endeavors that I have kind of put myself involved in in my uh, businesses. So uh, with, if we don't have anything else on board members, we're going to get into the minutes, Mr. Mr. I, I have one more thing. Uh, first of all, so that, that's two seats we got to fill here, Kate. What are we going to do? Uh, you guys uh, got, we're going to have to have a lot of meetings. We're going to have to have a lot of meetings. You've got a lot of work to do between now and May also, Mr. Chairman. I know, I know. But, uh, I'm ready for it. But again, I thank you for your service and, uh, and what you've contributed. Again, we've had our differences over the years, but your, your heart's always been in the right place yeah. and you're... I'm not perfect, it, I know it, that. You've done, uh, did a pretty good Easy. job guiding us the last year and a half or so. So you've done a pretty good job of guiding us through Thank some you. tough issues. So We've had a lot of challenges we have. Uh, in, in the times I've been here. You guys had it before me. And, you know, I think us doing the strategic plan when I arrived, I think has really helped me focus and be a better board member. And I think it's helped the community be a better um, planner, planning uh, community. And the, um, you know, we talked about the housing production plan. It's part of that whole strategic planning, and we should embrace it, and we should honor it and live with it. It's unfortunate we live with a state that doesn't quite see it that way. But we're going to work hard to help give everybody, get everybody back to focus. But, uh, one other thing, Mr. Chairman, and I, I, before I just found out, but the uh, a former member of this board, uh, Mr. Ben Sands, passed away uh, recently. And uh, Ben was a longtime member of the board, long mm -hmm. active member of the community, um, coached a lot of kids in hockey. Did he, uh, did, did he first get elected by? Uh, no, you're thinking someone else. Uh, you know, you know, writing. You know, okay, but no, Ben. Uh, ben again, lifelong member of the community. His father served before on this board too. So, uh, uh, great uh, contributor to the community. Um, very uh, thoughtful guy and a very uh, generous individual. Quietly contributing uh, for 60 years or more to uh, various causes, and uh, not just here in North Reading, but uh, statewide, nationally, and internationally. Uh, but very generous people, uh, great members of the community, and uh, you know what he, he set the groundwork back in the, uh, in the 60s and 70s uh, for a lot of what we're enjoying here today, and a uh, very thoughtful individual and a great public servant. Nice. He's going to be missed. Thank you for letting us know. Michael, I'd just like to thank you for your leadership in the past couple of years. Well, Mr. Masseri, I've learned a lot working from you. With you. So. I know we've had some differences, but well, that's what's beautiful about this, out. about the and way we. That's part of what a board is all about. Yeah. Anyway. We shouldn't always agree. It's not healthy for the community if we all agree. Well, that's good then. We've, done, we've done a pretty good job. <laughs> we've done a great job. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'd like to do, because we have a lot of folks here for um, agenda item number seven, I'd like to maybe do the proclamation, Michael, if we could do that quickly, sure. and then we'll get to 20 Elm Street, so we don't have to have you sit and go at us. We can do the minutes after you all leave. So we're gonna go to the proclamation, okay. then we're gonna go to 20 Elm Street. So Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Oh. Chairman, I move to proclaim Tuesday, March 12, 2019, to be North Reading night off, and to read the proclamation. Second. Okay, motion to second. Mr. O'Leary, you wanna read the proclamation? So we have to read it before we vote? I the, think the, so. <laughs> okay. So we want to make a change to it. Yeah. Uh, whereas, North Reading Community Impact Team, 
works to identify factors that have a negative impact on the quality of life for all community members, from our young children to our senior citizens, and to implement solutions that solve the underlying problems. Whereas the North Reading Community Impact Team is a partnership between the North Reading Police Department, Youth Services, Elder Services, School Department, Parks and Recreation, Fire Department, Board of Health, and the Board of Selectmen. Whereas North Reading is a busy, thriving town, but community impact team surveys show that time management and stress are a key factor impacting North Reading families. Whereas North Reading is a uh, whereas studies show that children and teens and families who eat dinner together frequently have lower incidence of drug and alcohol use, it is the goal of the North Reading Community Impact Team to support healthy relationships and strong communications within families. Now, therefore, we, the Select Board of North Reading, Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim Tuesday, March 12, 2019, to be North Reading Night Off. We urge all town departments, committees, community organizations, sports leagues, and businesses with regularly scheduled events for students, families, and families to suspend all activities beginning at 5 p.m. on March 12, 2019 so that all North Reading families, young and old, can unplug and slow down to spend more time together enjoying a meal, conversation, and unpressured family time. Michael Prisco, Chairman, Select Board. Proclaim this the 14th day of January, 2019. Thank you. So we have the motion, we have the second, we've heard the proclamation. Any comments? Yes, uh, good evening. My name is Peter McJane. I'm not a resident of North Reading, but I serve on a few boards and action teams. And I'm a member of the Community Impact uh, K-12 action team. And I'm here to promote uh, Reading, uh, North Reading Night Off. Night, night off. Uh, it was very successful last year. It's a great time for families just to shut off all the machines and just have some time together. Uh, many of the restaurants um, uh, donate some of their services and give some coupon discounts. Horseshoe, Pat Lee, thank you very much, Pat, uh, for your great work uh, the past few years. I'll see you later. <laughs> um, so again, we're just here to promote it, and we think it's a great time to families to get together. Thank you. Any other comments? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And one absent. Before I go on any further, I do have to let folks know that Mr. Schultz isn't here this evening for only one reason. He came down with pneumonia, so um, he, believe me, he, he wanted to come and I wouldn't let him. Um, I would not inflict all of us with that, but uh, he's at home resting, he was watching, so, um, but he wanted me to send his apologies to all the folks visiting this evening that uh, he's sorry he couldn't be here this evening. So, Mr. Gilberto, we'll turn it over to you for 20 Elm Street. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Can everybody hear me okay here in the room? So, as was mentioned earlier, and as I described in response to a question earlier, before the board tonight, uh, for review purposes, that's not uh, something that we're requesting approval of the board, but simply to review in the interest of full transparency, is a comment letter on behalf of the town, uh, in particular its many departments, relative to this development proposal at 20 Elm Street. There is a comment period that is open. It is open until January 16th, which is Wednesday of this week. The town, uh, I believe at the urging of Mass uh, Housing, uh, uh, or at the urging of the developer, I can't recall who it was, was encouraged to facilitate comment from the general public, folks such as yourselves, which we have been accumulating in the town planner's office. So to those of you who submitted your comments, thank you. They will be forwarded along to Mass Housing for receipt by the deadline, uh, which right now is on uh, Wednesday of this week. Uh, this letter is intended to provide an overview of the town's response and general comment um, relative to the development uh, in the context of the regulations that exist for the review. And uh, Ms. Bailey, thank you for your efforts earlier. So you, you kind of outlined many of those, uh, the criteria that I'm going to go through here. So that may save some time in my presentation. Um, so I'm going to go through the sections of the letter here and I'm going to identify basically how we've structured it. I did not intend to go bullet by bullet on the letter for the public. Once the letter has been signed and sent, it will be posted to the town's uh, web page relative to the 20 Elm Street project. I'm sure you've all seen it at this point. It is a tremendous resource uh, which was put together by the town uh, planner. I will also note that this letter was 99% drafted by the town planner, Danielle McKnight, who works for the Planning Commission and also is a facilitator for the town's development team. She was unfortunately unable to be here this evening, uh, so I'm going to do my best to try to present it uh, on her behalf. 
Uh, but I want to recognize her efforts for pulling this together and their efforts of the many members of the development team who provided comment. So the first category I'm going to review here in the letter is the town's response to the site eligibility. Uh, and as was referenced, there are very particular regulations that govern site eligibility and call for what mass housing is to consider when making its determination relative to uh, a site proposal. Um, the first component that we've put up here is affordable housing in North Reading. And you'll see that we have a number of bullets here that talk about the efforts that the town has put forth over the past 10, 15, or more years to develop affordable housing here in North Reading, uh, most recently in our housing production plan, which was approved by the Commonwealth uh, in August with an effective date of June 2018. There are five uh, additional 40B projects and one 40R project, which the town has worked cooperatively on with developers um, to create a project that is compatible with surrounding neighborhoods. <coughs> uh, we indicate here that we are at this, po at this point in time 20 units short of uh, the 10 percent threshold which uh, provides a so-called safe harbor to um, uh, render um, a, 20, a comprehensive permit application under chapter 40b uh, invalid um, we are short of that 10 percent where i think it's 9.6 percent when you do the math out um, we have over the past 11 years designated multiple sites uh, within single family residential districts for development to create affordable housing units. I'll note, as we noted at the site walk, that uh, in that designation, most recently articulated in our housing production plan, the property at 20 Elm Street was not within the overlay district, nor was it one of the identified sites. We did a multifamily over housing overlay district in 2017, which was approved to allow the uh, development of the Berry property that's ongoing, the so-called Pulte um, housing development. Um, that's 450 units of um, market rate age-restricted ho uh, housing. There is an additional two and a half acre parcel of land that remains available for development, um, for which there is no restriction for age or a number of bedrooms. Uh, however, um, by, uh, by virtue of policy that has been established by this board and the Economic Development Committee, the targeted use to this date has been to use that property for commercial development. Um, and it, we went out with a request for proposals, we're not satisfied with the responses, and we've elected to hold off on further pursuing development of that site until the Pulte development is further along. And I'll just note here to kind of summarize this particular section, the town believes strongly that previous municipal action is of a character and scale to create significant opportunities as of right to meet the municipality's need for affordable housing, and that these actions should be given weight in the eligibility findings. Uh, although the development has not yet occurred, the fact should be considered, and it should not be determinative uh, in, terms of the town, in terms of the mass housing review. With the approval of the housing production plan, which I mentioned took place last summer, the town's begun developing a request for proposals to develop affordable housing on town-owned land. In particular, for those of you who've been watching the meetings, we're talking about the property on Carpenter Drive, which we highlighted on December 17th. The board had an initial discussion and is committed to a continuing discussion. The next section of the letter speaks to the comment on the appropriateness of the conceptual design. And we talk about um, the, uh, the site in general. Um, I'm just going to read from this as the best way to, to, to identify it because there are things that are unknown and I think that the first speaker spoke pretty eloquently relative to the environmental concerns. From the town standpoint, if the appropriate environmental authorities were to determine the site was appropriate with regard to wastewater disposal and stormwater management, if that determination were made and the development were not to negatively impact the Ipswich River, the town would agree that the site is generally appropriate for residential development. As we all know, the site is currently zoned for residential development. It's located in Residence A, which is predominantly single-family homes, and is across the street from the zoning unit uh, Resident E, which is the so-called planned unit development uh, for the Greens. Uh, there are a series of factors to be considered in evaluating the project <coughs> design. Uh, we talk about in the letter the fact that it's largely um, if not exclusively single-family homes and townhomes that are located in the, in the neighborhood um, the town initially suggested that the massing design and density of the existing townhouses would be a more appropriate design for the location uh, and we make reference here to the handbook that i believe Ms. barley Ms. Uh, bailey was referring to earlier in her comments many of you know that there was a site walk that took place on december 18th um, 
cited during that site walk was the proximity of the buildings one and two to the abutting residences on Lynn Street. Um, we also requested for uh, any attempt, to, uh, every attempt be made to reduce the height of the closest buildings to Lynn Street and to reduce the distance between the buildings and the abutting properties. We also are requesting that the developer reduce the overall density of the project to better conform with the surrounding neighborhood. The environmental resources, I'm not going to, to read through them. I think that they were captured pretty well in the comments that were made earlier. and We echo many of them, perhaps not to the level of detail that was identified, um, but we have identified that the significant environmental concern given the proximity to the Ipswich River. Um, obviously, there's a requirement for a discharge permit from the DEP. Uh, we don't have municipal sewer over there, so you're talking about on-site wastewater disposal. Um, we talk about topography. That's another component of the mass housing review that um, they must factor in considering whether to issue a letter. And while when one looks at the <coughs> property, and many of you, I believe, were at the site walk, the, the, the lot appears to be fairly flat, but we are also aware that the property was filled, um, the best that I can determine, approximately 30 years ago, um, we need to determine whether the soils are suitable for the actual construction of large buildings. Uh, that is an unknown at this point in time. So the next section of the letter talks about development team feedback, and this is really particular comments from various departments, and they're all referenced here. I'll read them out for those who can't see it. Engineering, planning, fire, police, assessing, health, uh, DPW slash water, and the school department. Those are all traditionally the major departments that are involved in the regulation of development in town. They often are providing comments to the regulatory boards um, here in town hall, whether it be the community planning commission or otherwise. First comment makes reference to the housing production plan, which I know that uh, board members are all uh, familiar with. Um, we talk about the proximity of amenities and services. Uh, the nearest uh, amenities to, the, uh, to this proposed development is uh, uh, a site that includes two upscale restaurants and a paid membership pool complex. Um, it's currently a driving range uh, that would be developed. Um, it's located on the easterly end of North Reading near the Linfield and Middleton uh, borders. Uh, the area is residential with the exception of the resort, and we've made note of that here. Um, avail in terms of am available amenities, it's limited to the pool and the two restaurants. Um, the handicapped accessible units uh, in the project, um, we make reference here to see a larger proportion be included. The town's emergency services are located far from the site. Uh, many emergency calls are made to the western edge of town, just outside this building. Um, this uh, proposal for 200 units um, could potentially put a strain on town services since the property's location is actually in the easternmost area of town. There was a request relative to further information on the impact to the condition of Route 62, which was reconstructed um, approximately 10 to 15 years ago uh, by the state uh, in partnership <coughs> with the town. Um, so that certainly is a concern that we have. Um, the issue of uh, school children, and I know that that's one that gets a lot of discussion and Mass Housing has been very upfront with us that that's not a consideration for them and we're not looking to disagree with them about that. But what I think is of concern and it was highlighted by the superintendent of schools is that it can be difficult to predict the impact that these developments will have. Um, so that is certainly an, an unknown and if there is uh, school, um, school age children at this development they would obviously need to be bused from this location. Uh, there's a series of side notes uh, that are on here that uh, pertain to the, uh, to, the, the, to the site. I'll call them um, secondary issues. Some of them may have impacts on the abutting neighborhood, for those of you who are on Gillis, uh, uh, Gillis Drive, for example, talking about um, lighting, the secondary access that would be required, whether the, the emergency road is gravel or not. Um, we asked for additional detail relative to the phasing of the project. <coughs> we asked for additional information relative to the wetlands. Again, the environmental concern that's out there that I think is a, a significant unknown um, to be uh, obviously reviewed, particularly at the state level, but nonetheless is an, an unknown. Um, we were asking for a, a peer review um, relative to the property concerning stormwater, civil, and traffic uh, engineering issues. Um, the issue of the pool that came up in the site walk for those of you who were there and I think that is an, a bit of an unknown right now and uh, the developer indicated that uh, there, there was a bit of uncertainty. I think that that's something that folks would like to know more about. Um, there was a significant amount of 
requested information from the Board of Health. Again, they uh, may not necessarily be issuing the formal per permit for wastewater disposal uh, at the site. That would be done by the DEP, but they nonetheless are identifying all the areas where the property would need to comply in order for there to be development. And again, that has a significant impact when factoring <coughs> the, um, the environmental concerns. And then uh, the final area of this section talks about some of the things that were included or excluded in, in the submittal or perhaps uh, were errors or incomplete statements. I'm not going to go through all of them, but the ones that uh, the, first, the first few here seem to have reference to a, a plan that was maybe previously used as a, as a, for a submittal for another community and may assert as a template that needs to be updated to reflect the submittal here for North, uh, North Reading. Um, I'm going to reiterate just a comment that I made on December 17th relative, to, uh, excuse me, a comment that was made on December 17th here. Uh, the development summary included with the application uh, references meetings with the town that had occurred. Uh, while it is true, the applicant did not state that they did not disclose the nature of the construction project in advance of the first meeting in May of 2018 with the town planner. Further, the applicant did not state when the town provided feedback to the applicant in 2018, the applicant, applicant indicated they would revise the project for review with the town. After the passage of a few months, the town inquired of the status of the revision and was told they would review the revisions with the town once the revisions were complete and prior to filing with Mass Housing. The next communication, as the town townspeople know, was receiving notice that the site approval application had been filed. Um, there was a comment made relative to, uh, at the site walk on December 18th, that the town had left the developer with no choice but to apply for a 40B project. Town has to this point never indicated that subject to the appropriate environmental approvals, housing development could, could not occur at the site. In fact, during the initial meeting, the town expressed a willingness to consider a development that was denser than otherwise permitted by zoning, citing the townhouse development known as the Greens across the street from 20 Elm as an example. And then finally, um, at the September 4th, 2012 alcoholic beverage license hearing in front of the select board, the manager of NY Ventures LLC had stated that one of the things that when first announced that the current owner was going to buy the club, everybody heard that we were going to build houses, we're going to knock down pools, that isn't what we've got planned for this property, we're going to keep pretty much all of it green. Um, and I'm paraphrasing the quote that, that was provided. And then we close with a simple thank you um, for the opportunity to comment. And for the board members, uh, behind the letter, you should see a couple of pages of the regulations that are in there. They refer directly back to the letter. Um, so to summarize, again, I want to thank the town planner for her efforts with regard to this. We were not asking for the board to uh, necessarily vote to approve or not approve the letter because we, were, we believe simply providing um, factual comment relative to the, um, the proposed development. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Yes, you have to go to the podium if you want to ask a question. Is, is it too late to have the um, letter amended as is? Would you be willing to consider comments at this meeting? I think we certainly would listen to comments and I'll evaluate them with the town planner. Um, okay. So uh, no, I just any, any comments are taken constructively. <laughs> just one minute. Um, I'm very concerned about the water supply. Now, right now, there's plans, I even heard it tonight, about getting water from the Merrimack. Uh, that could take a couple years. I'm not sure what timelines you're thinking about, but from what I read, it's going to require some upgrades on Andover's part. Uh, there's, there's permitting, there's EIR involved. That could take a while, possibly years. Now, the, according to the report that I saw from Siyaba, he plans to have building permits, or he hopes to have building permits, springtime 2020. So what that means is if, if they start constructing and this thing is built, they're going to have to get the water, not from the Merrimack, but from the Ipswich, probably from the Merrimack. That's, that's going to put through the strain on the Ipswich, you know, before the Merrimack thing will come in. I'm almost sure of that. Now getting back to your comment, Mr. Prisco, about encouraging people to get on that, that site so you can see how much water you're using. You brought up the environmental reasons for doing that, and I fully agree with that. But as an environmentalist and a resident, uh, to, to, to watch my water and save my water 
only to have it given away to a large development does nothing for the environment, it makes it worse. The water I save, I would like to see stay in the Ipswich to, to continue restoring it. And so we can possibly can, add we that. Can maybe give our, our, just a quick summary yeah. of the it's schedule. Just a, just a quick summary on the, on the, the water quantity. We're not going to have a quantity problem in delivering to this, <clears throat> this development or the rest of the community for the foreseeable future at all. We're already drawing close to 60%, 65% of our water from Andover from the Merrimack. Uh, that's going to go eventually to 100%. Uh, Infrastructure-wise, Andover is capable right now of delivering the water to us. <clears throat> We're going to do some upgrades on primarily around 28 North Street uh, just to address certain situations. But from a daily standpoint, as of today, if this were online, it would not impact the quantity of water available to anybody. But we have to remember, though, the Ipswich has a very serious no-flow, low-flow problem. Right. They, what are the, what you are know, the and if we want to continue that, then fine. I agree with you, Mr. Volia. No, no, but, but you have to understand, too, that what we're taking from the Merrimack, whether through the septic as well, is again going into the Ipswich Basin. Yes. That's a I'll positive. Be, yes, I That's agree with that. That's a positive, yeah. We have the Ipswich uh, uh, Watershed Association embracing what we're doing. Yes. Here, I, just no, for that very reason. Yeah. I know, but just for that reason. Yeah. You know, because but we're trying to correct we're gonna, that We're going to draw less and bring more in. So as far as the water quantity, th that's not an issue as far as our ability to deliver. Uh, I, I, I disagree yeah. with you on that. Okay. Uh, but, thank you. And again, our projected needs and what we're uh, permitting for are going to be not only current needs, but future needs for the foreseeable future yeah. 25, 30 years out. Okay. Thank you. Any questions, board members, for? A letter. <coughs> no question, just comments. I, I again I read through it and uh, I thought it was you know really fairly comprehensive and uh, uh, bulleted uh, most of the most salient points that need to be made in relation to uh, the proposal that's being made. Uh, it's certainly an environmentally sensitive area. Um, the proposal uh, that's being put forth it certainly is uh, significant in relation to the number of units that are being proposed, uh, and the impact of that, and the the style of the buildings uh, are generally not acceptable. Um, and I think the letter reflects that uh, professionally to the extent that uh, you know, what's being proposed is a little bit too much for, for the site and where it's going to be. So I, I think uh, what's been formulated um, will give the state pause in relation to uh, giving immediate approval. I think there will be a little bit more discussion going on. Uh, prior to the state uh, giving any approval uh, for this site. So it's, uh, so I think the planner and the administration have done a great job of highlighting the uh, concerns that we have and have with the specific proposal. To the podium. And you. <clears throat> Loretta Capizzuto, 12 Dwayne Drive. I think the town has done a phenomenal job in asking all the good questions. This is great. I just want to know if there's a time frame when all of these questions will come back to us, Mr. Gilabardi. Is there a time frame? There is. Uh, my understanding is that there's a statutory timeline for a response to come back. Uh, I do not know it off the top of my head, but my recollection is that it is weeks and not months for them to get back to us. I, I will make a note just for everyone here. Um, the environmental questions are significant ones. I have asked for additional time for us to review um, all of the criteria, including the environmental um, cri environmental issues. I don't know whether that extension of time for us to comment will be granted or not. I'm still waiting for an answer. Um, but this is what we we're, we're able to come up with. We're hoping to get it by Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. <coughs> we're hoping to hear by Wednesday we get an extension. We did file for it. Yes. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Through the chair. Through the chair, please. Go right ahead. Hi, my name is Dorina Helfrich. I live at 8 Lynn Street. I'm a direct abutter. I'm concerned that this project is going to jeopardize the health and safety of my children. I do not have any other source of drinking water except for the well that is going to be feet within this project. And it, the project itself is not meeting the minimum setbacks for my property. I just want to feel that my family is being kept in mind, that their health and well-being, my children, will be safe. 
I just want that on the record. Now, you submitted a letter, correct? I did. <clears throat> and you informed them of the drinking water you take it through your private well, mm -hmm. and it's probably okay. We're going to make sure that we follow up on that as well. To the podium, if you'd like to make a comment. Well, and again, I was asking permission. Yes, to the podium. I'm giving you permission. <laughs> and, um, and if you don't mind, again, just restating your name, just so the folks at home sure. uh, and Maureen can have it for the record. Uh, it's Elizabeth Coolidge Stoltz from Two Gellis Drive, and it, it's to the point of um, groundwater contamination. And that is that, based on the two cases I alluded to earlier, um, settled in court in 2016, the issue of water contamination from um, developments that have obligate septic, and this would be one, um, is not just a matter of the state, um, but rather of towns. In the case of Carver, it was the town that objected that its wells and those of abutting communities could face contamination even if <coughs> the development's project met state specifications and uh, on extended review that project's developer withdrew the 40B because they weren't sure. And I gave the um, article so that that case law could be looked up to Danielle McKnight today. The other is the case from Stowe where someone who was an abutter and had obligate well water with no possibility of town water, and I know of at least two people, one over the line in Middleton, and also I've been told the jurisdictions of Linfield would also constitute abutters for this legal purpose, uh, could litigate on the grounds that their water could be contaminated, and um, even if it meets state criteria, and that was upheld by the Supreme Judicial Court in that case in 2016, it would also be a matter for the town to say that you don't accept the risk. So it isn't just a matter of whether or not the state does, it is also a matter of whether the town objects. That was the point I wanted to make. Thank you. To the podium. Charlotte Murphy, 10 Cleek Court, at the Greens across the street from the proposal. I would just ask, um, in the effectiveness of your letter, it's very effective, but the developer stated at the walkthrough that they were going to do a traffic study in January or February. The, that intersection directly across from Mid Iron Drive, a traffic study is only appropriate when the golf course is operational, which is April through November because they have a lot of functions at the same time that they're having functions. The developer, uh, Teresa's, has weddings. And the months at which they have to look at the traffic impact have to be months when Teresa's functions are operational and that golf course is operational. And also, residents of the Greens, I don't want to say half, but many of them live in Florida in the winter, possibly half. So the developer's suggestion to study traffic in January and February um, is an issue at that intersection because it's not just the condition of Route 62. It will be a nightmare if the entrance to a 200-unit apartment complex is across from the golf course and the greens at the school bus stop. So I would just ask if you could maybe put that in your letter that it be done at an appropriate time of year. Yeah, we, uh, you know, I had that as a note mm -hmm. that we probably may want to update the letter to request that and traffic studies are done and should be in the springtime in the summer because, like you're right, I mean, right now you have a lot of snowbirds that aren't even living in their homes right now and with the golf course closed, I mean, my nightmare scenario in my head is you have a golf outing, right, same time the kids have to go to school and then it, it just the whole area over there should be it should There'll be, be thousands of cars point. potentially between yeah. those two complexes and if there's Do a, a golf study now though makes absolutely no sense makes no sense at all no. thank you sure thank you for the comments mm -hmm. yeah anything else yes Mrs. Minipelli I just had a few comments I know we're not supposed Michael. to be picking it apart and, and, and rewriting it for you but I was just thinking in terms of what you're showing 
you know, for example, Mr. Fields is explaining, and, and also Mrs. Stoltz is explaining the environmental impact because of the proximity of the <coughs> river. Are you going to be providing support or imagery or pictures or what have you? I'm sure they already looked at it <coughs> in depth and saw where it's located and its location next to, in you know, these p particular, you know, the riverway. But are we going to incorporate that as well? And I also think, just in terms of what Mr. Felix said, it's it's ten homes, ten single-family homes versus two hundred unit a two hundred unit how many building development in that lo location. I think this is well written, but if you can sort of express, you know, the need for twenty units, where it, we're balancing the need for twenty units of a plan that we've almost achieved here with an extra 180 units and how many projected residents in those units versus what it would be allowed by right right now, which is 10, 10 homes. I think that should be stated. So that's what the town has to balance out here. But also, there's one section in the letter where you, in parentheses, in terms of that housing production and as well as the location of the number of um, areas that have been identified for these smaller developments. You have in parentheses that 20 <coughs> Elm isn't part of those identified. Take it out of parentheses and put it right at the top. That's what I would suggest. This isn't one of the locations that's been identified as suitable for this type of development. I know where we are walking a fine line of taking a position or not, but if you hear what everyone is saying who has submitted records, and truly, the, they have to consider the impact, not just the number of people, the number of units, but the actual environmental impact, certainly the traffic. I think we should show it somehow that this is, in addition to all the questions we want answered or the things that they have to identify, look, look and see where this is. Look and see that it's right near Middleton. <coughs> look and see that it's right near Linfield look and see its proximity to our neighbors. I, I think we should show that somehow, too, if there's a way to, to or, do that. Or maybe in, in, to interject, is, there a, is this the appropriate letter to interject that they connect, contact those communities that are abutted to get their input? Because I, I don't believe they get an opportunity to submit on this, do they? I, I'm not sure that they've been I don't believe they participating do. in the process. I haven't. But I think them. we should encourage um, DHCD and to reach out to them as well, to make them part of this, because they will have impacts as well. The answer is very much. You can go right yeah, there. Understood. <laughs> you can actually, thank you. Right here. Right here. Right here. Sir, you can come right here. Just sit right here, Jeff. Um, just state your name. Yes, Jeff Bemis, 3 Fairview Street here in North Reading. And I just have a question for the town, for the board. I'm well aware that the Ipswich River Watershed Association has done a lot of valuable work to conserve and protect and improve the quality of this river over the last decade and beyond, all the way from Wilmington right down to Ipswich. And they're in the process now of taking down uh, some dams, including the one at the, in North Reading that's not far from the site. Uh, to encourage the spawning of fish and to, to revitalize the river. My question is, is this group, can this group be considered as an ally or a con consultant, a resource to, to assist with all that's going on with respect to this problem? I just, I haven't heard the group mentioned and I, I'm just curious as to whether they would be a valuable asset to have on board. Thank you. I think that they, they could be, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, again, I, the area that I think we struggle the most because you, you typically would see a significant amount of engineering going into the review is, is the environmental aspect of it. Uh, we, that's not something that we've had the, the ability to, to, to pull together that level of detail, but we know the concerns, clearly. Uh, so I, I think that's something we could well, pursue. Well, this is one of the reasons why I'd asked for the town administrator to consider getting an extension so we could get some adult supervision in regards to the environmental so we can make sure we submit the right comments associated with the environmental. Um, 
you know, because internally in our department, we may not have that expertise, and that's why we, we're re one of the reasons why we're requesting this. Yes. Are they are they going to prepare correspondence and as part of their comment? Is, do we know that or? Yes, they are. Okay, that's great. I've been in contact with them and I've been at their office and I had them review my letter to make sure that they were in the factual <coughs> inaccuracies and yes, they are preparing their Any other questions? Yes, to the podium. Oh, not, I'm sorry, you're next. You're, you're, you're I'm so go. sorry. We ran in straight. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tom Wu. I'm in a butter. Been here over 35 years. So I'm going to ask a couple of things. Uh, the town administrator, nice job here. But I think we need to know the timetable of all the significant steps involved. What is next? I'm looking at. In, in the first quarter, I think we you need to timetable this. A lot of people because there's a lot of unopened uh, questions that we because I just heard that Mr. Yeber <coughs> is planning to you know break ground in the spring. That's that's less than a year away. Now what what's the the steps for the approval projects? What, okay, sir. What's the state's involvement? What's the town's involvement? Is there going to be an open forum for so, residents to ask questions? Now, I'm, I just got back from Florida. This floored me. I mean, it floored all of us. Mr. Yeba and, and several of the people that I made comments about, he snuck this under the rug. Let's call a spade a spade. All right? What I read in the, t the town paper, uh, he wrote the, the, the whoever was on the board. He, he, he made a proposal like on the back of an envelope. And then we have a walkthrough on the 18th. I never heard of it. I would I would have I wanted to be part of that. Th yeah. This for a project of this magnitude, this guy is doing some devious behavior, which well, I don't appreciate. So the process, unfortunately for us as a community, doesn't really work in the favor of communication. So we took it upon ourselves to make sure that we tried to get the word out to let everyone know that this walkthrough was going to take place. He was not obligated to do that. And why? Because why? Because he snuck it in? No, sir. It's because that's the way the process is structured. He, because that, because that, we didn't meet, we sir, didn't meet the 10%? Could, nope, sir. If, yes, well, all of this is happening because we're only 20 units away from meeting it. Uh, but I'm going to talk about that in my wrap-up speech here. Okay. Um, but... That part, that step in the process, he is not required to send <coughs> out notification to the abutters. But we took it upon ourselves to do that because we felt it was important to make sure everyone was aware that this you, was You're telling me there's a loophole in the law? No, it's not a loophole. It's just a, now there will be plenty of opportunity for the community. When this gets in front of the ZBA, that's your opportunity. Okay, that's okay. your opportunity to listen. Well, that's why I want to see the comments. timeline. Because yes, so in regards to the timeline, Mr. Gilberto, if you want to maybe I, I do a quick that. review. So I'll do a quick review, and again, just to be clear, we are in the thank middle. You. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. We are in the middle of a state comment period run by Mass Housing, a quasi-public agency of the Commonwealth. Mm, uh, the developer filed the application for uh, project eligibility, which the developer needs to have before they can apply to the town to develop the land. The timeline that's in here uh, at the time of the application on December 3rd called for project eligibility to be issued affirmative uh, for the application to be issued in February of 2019. So from what we can determine that means the developer is expecting that sometime in February this comment process that's open will result in a determination being made. Uh, we asked for an extension of that time when we uh, received notice because we felt with the holidays that it was far too compressed and we were granted that. But again, as I mentioned, we were asking for a further extension, which at this point we've not yet received, but we're hopeful we will we'll receive. The developer is proposing to then meet with neighbors and town staff in March of 2019 and then to file the comprehensive permit, which is the application to build the project with the Board of Appeals in April of 2019. And there's a corresponding filing that he's done, done, gonna, proposing to do as well at that same point in time, if not sooner, with a hearing to begin with the Board of Appeals uh, in May of 2019, 
a building permit being issued in the spring of 2020, so one year from this spring, and the first occupancy of the uh, property in the spring of 2021, so or two years from this spring. <coughs> But the most important thing that, to note here, and I, I know most of you have heard it uh, from some of the comments that have taken place in the community, but there will be public hearings held by a North Reading Regulatory Board, the Board of Appeals. And they'll be held at, uh, in this building or, or, or another appropriate public facility that is accessible. Um, they're required to be uh, notices sent to abutters for the project to take place, for, for this development to, take, development to take place. Excuse me. There's a requirement that they be advertised as well in the newspaper. So they will be well publicized, and th this will not be the last point in time for discussion of the project if a project eligibility letter were to be issued by Mass Housing. Uh, without the letter being issued, if Mass Housing were to review all of the, the feedback and comment that it was received in, in concert with its regulations, and not to, if Mass Housing were to not issue the project eligibility letter, then from, the, from what we can understand, the project as currently proposed, this project as proposed and this timeline as proposed would not proceed. Can I just ask one follow-up? I don't need the mic. I can talk loud enough. Yes, to the mic. I'm sorry. Sorry, right. sir. Sir, so you have to go to the mic. I apologize. You have to. Because the folks at home will not be able to hear you. Uh, town Administrator. Uh, um, does the town have to make a recommendation to Mass before any of this? What, I guess what I'm asking is, when do you have a deadline to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to go to Mass? Mr. Goldberg. So the, the, the law and the regulations are not structured to give the town the ability to give a thumbs up or a thum, thumbs down. Right. What we are afforded is an opportunity to comment, excuse me, to comment on the project, which at this point we must do by Wednesday of this week, January 16th. Is there... But the Zoning Board of Appeals mm -hmm. does have... The, Correct, so yes. The role of the Zoning Board of Appeals is to approve a comprehensive permit or not approve it. And again, okay. if they, and again, if they're not going to approve it, so in other words, after several public hearings and trying to negotiate with the developer and it doesn't work out and the town is adamant that it's not suitable, the developer then has an opportunity to appeal that negative decision to the state. And then the state can override the local decision or <coughs> uphold it. But the, what I just heard, he, he just mentioned, the deadline is this Wednesday for comments. For comments to the I, state. I, and, and you're appealing for an extension. Correct. We, we've asked for we a request extension. One. Correct. Right. Was, what, what's your expectation on that? Highly unlikely. Okay. So basically, by we're gonna ask. at 4 p.m., <coughs> you need to make some kind of decision. No. no. Oh, you, you're going to make a comment, sir. Sir, we're gonna if you could, letter. through the chair, sir. That letter will be submitted. This letter here that we just reviewed okay. is what we're preparing to submit. Okay. What we discussed this afternoon was we would like a, just a few more days, maybe. A, you know, maybe a, a little bit more time to bring in even a, a, a few more consultants in regards to the environment okay. to make sure we fully capture in our letter the environmental impacts associated okay. with this. That's all we wanted to do. Okay, fine. And that may, we may need 30 days to get that done. That's what we're requesting. And, um, and we're hopeful we we'll get something. We requested so. 60 days for an extension. So. We asked, it, we asked it, for 60. This is on the town website, this letter. It, it, it will be yeah. once it's finalized, yes. <clears throat> So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, when so, by Wednesday, to the, if you don't, or here, either one. This gentleman first, Mike. Call that first. Oh, sorry. That's right. I forgot about you. And then you go next. I apologize. I forgot Hi. about you. Andrea Spano, 3 Hayward Farms Lane. Uh, I just had a question. Have, have you guys used the town council to review or put input into this letter? And um, if not, have any of the objections been addressed by them? I, I, I don't follow the second part of the question. I apologize. So well, I'll answer I mean, the first. Have, have you utilized the town council to review the letter? So given the at? nature of the letter, which is to provide comment in the context of the regulations, no, uh, because we're, we're really looking through the development team at the regulations that have been set forth at the state level, looking at the development project, and then providing general comment. Um, so with, given the nature of what they're asking for, we wouldn't normally ask for town council to review it. So we haven't in this instance. Okay. Was there a second part? I'm, I'm sorry. I no. Oh, okay. I don't know that I'm personally satisfied with that. I think that they should be looking at this, but. Well, I mean, council is, you know, there are, 
This is a legal letter. I think if that's what your concern is, if we'll get sued over this letter. No, no, no. I'm just that type of set of eyes on it. Okay. I, I'll, I'll discuss it with the planner. I mean, yeah. I'm not opposed to necessarily having it reviewed. Thank you for the suggestion. To the podium. Or, the, or over here. Either. <clears throat> My name is Jeff Stoltz of Two Gillis Drive. And just some guidance. Uh, we've been talking about North Reading's uh, housing production plan. And one of the key criteria that I would think, again, I, I do have a son who is disabled. You know, I'm concerned about the value of whatever housing we provide for somebody who, who needs such housing. Um, I'm concerned as to what the criteria are, and I'm curious, is not one of the key criteria accessibility to food stores, places that they can, they can walk, um, pharmacies, things like that? And I'm curious to know how that is clarified in your document. So through you, Mr. Chairman, if you look at our housing production plan, uh, I believe that the areas are identified for affordable housing or housing that is more dense than uh, otherwise permitted in the zoning, those areas are within a reasonable distance of such amenities. And that's gotcha. one of the reasons why this location was uh, not identified. Okay. Um, there is a reference in there to the uh, accessibility of the site. <coughs> um, it was on either the second or third page. I'm happy to scroll through it to show it to you, but there is a reference in there. Would it be to possible for you to do sure, that? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Take a second, because you know, you were Please going. go right ahead. I mean, we do, we, we have identified that it's about eight miles to the closest transportation service from that location. So I appreciate that, but also, it's how many miles to the closest food store, to the closest pharmacy. I mean, the bottom line is, unless you're going to, to, and you did say this very nicely, or Danielle did, to upscale restaurants and a pool, but, <laughs> but you know, the bottom line is, and, and it, from what I understand from your low-cost housing plan, you know, if somebody was living in that, whether it was an elderly person, a disabled person, whomever it was, if they did not have a car, you know, they could, they could, have access to all the things they would need in order to, to live comfortably, as well as, by the way, potential employment within our community. Am I not correct in that? Yes. So, so here, what is, I'm not sure if we've specified, and I don't remember if it's in here, um, what, uh, what employment opportunities would be within walking distance <coughs> other than the two upscale restaurants, or are there any employment opportunities within walking distance from this facility? Mr. Gilberto. None. So, I, I mean, it may be there, and if it is, please point it out, but I, I really think some of those things should be highlighted, especially in the context of the fact that I, I want to celebrate all of you. I think our town did a great job in terms of being able to identify the right places. Mm. And I really think that we need to frame, because I'm, I'm deeply concerned about the environmental, but I'm also concerned that we, are do, we need to do the right thing. You know, we need to have the high ground here. And I think that this town has already established the high ground. And for the people that, that, that Mr. Yeba would claim to serve, I don't see that this, is, that this, that this development, if it moved forward, would actually serve them, you know, unless, unless they, they had transportation and, and, and again, you know, access to, to things that living right across from that is being in a butter. So simply if I could, exist. we'll have Mr. Gilberto answer your question, please. Thank you. Sure. Thank you for the comments. Uh, so this is the area I was referring to relative to access to the amenities and services. I do not believe there is a reference to employment opportunities, but that's something that I will review with the town planner for inclusion uh, in here. I think that's a great suggestion. Thank you. As, as well as also access to everything else. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, people get sick. They need a pharmacy. You know, how do you, how would you get to, as a, as a person who doesn't have a lot of money, you know, my son would certainly be in that situation. How would they get to the pharmacy? How would they get to the food store? And by the way, that much the more so as we enter periods where the, the, the sidewalks are going to be up and be impassable between there and the big Y or walking into town to one of the stores in town. Thank you for the feedback. This is Minya Pelly. Yeah, I, I think that should. Sorry, sir. We're going to go through the chair. Okay. I think that should probably be incorporated into that, you know, with additional language that indicates um, it isn't within walking distance of any of those kind of yeah. stores Public or, you know, 
doesn't we don't have public transportation here really we have you know we don't have a bus line we don't have a sidewalk we don't have we did there is sidewalk in that area right no there is not there's no sidewalk there. Sir, I can't have you screaming out. I'm sorry. Sir, I'm not going to rec I'm not recognizing you right now. We we understand. I do appreciate it. Um so, so maybe please, Mrs. Let me that out, but I also think again, if you show it. Don't just say it because there's a lot of words on this, but if you showed it, it's easy enough to print something off and graph out the nearest pharmacy, the nearest restaurant, the nearest, you know, that type of thing. In proximity. Because when I read through the requirements for THCD, it does talk about services, but it doesn't seem to be a specific requirement. I, I didn't I didn't read that. No, I, I think through you, Mr. Chairman, it's more contextual, but I, I think that the feedback that's being provided adds to the context. Oh, we should we should maybe mention upon the public the lack of public uh, services in the uh, in walking distance, because if I remember correctly, Mr. Gilboro, the project as submitted. Does it include parking? What's the parking situation? Is it one car for every unit, two cars for every unit? 1.6. Yeah, 1.6. So they, it's actually designed for people to live there without vehicles, right? Just by its definition of the, the way the project's been submitted? They're underestimating. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but potentially. Uh, you'd, uh, you'd I have think less maybe we should mention it that way, where the project's been submitted with only 1.6 cars <laughs> per unit which would actually yeah, in a community without public transportation and amenities yeah. not readily available yeah i think that's an important piece we probably should capture in this letter to the podium if you don't mind and i apologize for stopping you but i can't have you yelling out from the crowd only out of respect to the folks at home Believe me, you'd be amazed how many people can't wait for this meeting to come on every two weeks. We're very <laughs> All two of them. <laughs> two or three. It's three. My name is Carol Veronicus. I live at 35 Brassy Way. I did volunteer last year to sit on the Affordable Housing Committee and was part um, of that presentation with uh, Mass Affordable Housing, Danielle Knight and everything. And... Um, the reason I signed up for that is because I'm a proponent of it, and I really feel the town of North Reading needs to do a better job for senior housing and uh, disabilities and things like that. So I'm not here to say anything negative about affordable housing because I'm a proponent of it. This development is very dangerous for many reasons that have been brought up. Um, you're going to have children outside playing in damp and wetlands um, and could get hurt. But I think everybody is f familiar with the Teresa's facilities. And if you're there on a Friday or Saturday night or when there's a function or when the pool is busy or they have like a concert or a pool party out there, it is jam packed. Sometimes there's even cars parked out on the street. So from what I see on the, the site plan <coughs> is there's going to be a little road coming out from the side um, where the driving range was. And it's going to come somewhat through the parking lot and then out the, onto Elm Street out of the same place it's coming to now. That's a safety nightmare. So you, you picture a fire in there, a fire in an apartment building having to get through that parking lot with that many cars in an emergency situation it's a nightmare and it's going to be a real problem so um, the development is way too big it's not the right place for it mass affordable housing the the places that they did pick were for employment for public transportation for access to stores this is access to nothing uh, but a disaster. Um, I live in the greens across the street. I have to tell you the police fire um, Fire that was here tonight is up in my neighborhood probably one or two times a week I help a lot of my elderly neighbors. I've seen him in their houses. We have one way in and out of the greens and that worries me because if there's ever a lot of traffic or problem on the base um, 
uh, mid iron onto the highway, not to the highway, to 62, with all of that other traffic and commotion, you're talking about a serious issue for two highly pop populated neighborhoods to get services in there, fire and police. So, so we're all in agreement with you. I don't mean to cut you off. Yeah, but no. I'm just the, the ZBA, when we get into the ZBA hearings, this is where your opportunity is to yep. bring that forward to them. Unfortunately, tonight, I don't want to make this about to look like a public hearing. I really yeah. want us to okay. focus on the letter. And I just want to ask you if you felt that we captured those little bit of concerns, if we touched upon them in this letter, enough for you um, to be satisfied. I think the, um, the access to this particular development as proposed with the one road um, and the mass of cars that are in their parking lot is a serious safety issue. And one of the notes I took that we're going to look into is we're going to request to have the traffic study do, <coughs> done later when all the snowbirds are back and the course has been Yeah, reopened. but I'm talking about at the restaurant. Yeah. So I'm not talking about at the Greens. I'm talking about... But when the study's done, it should capture all of that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? No. All right. Any other questions or comments? Uh, we try to wrap this up. Just one more comment, okay. very quickly. Actually, very fast comment in a, in a, in a question. Go right comment ahead. is, I think you did a great job capturing all of the concerns. Uh, some of them had to be enhanced, that have been mentioned. However, the overall tone of the letter, I think, could be improved to say, you don't want this thing, if in fact that's the case. You know, um, and my question is, goes to Ms. Mrs. Mandapelli. You mentioned that you're walking a fine line here mm -hmm. of approval. I'm wondering what are the positive parts of this that you are considering that this could be, that this should be approved. If you're walking a fine line, we gave you a whole lot of reasons why it shouldn't be. What are the reasons that the board's considering why it should be? Well, you Thank gave, you. we all discussed a whole lot of reasons why I think we're all in agreement why it shouldn't be. Right. But at the same time, um, he's because we're under that limit, he's allowed to do this. I know someone said he snuck it in or whatever. He's allowed to. That's just what the law allows him to do. Right. So where we have to rely on Danielle, who's superb in her abilities and expertise and has worked on all of these various pieces here, we have to rely on her in this to give all of these legal reasons why we needed to be looked at with a with a closer eye and a finer point by the agency that's allowed to give that initial yes to it to move it forward so i think we're at an initial phase even though we're all assuming it's a rubber stamp done deal here so this should be like this with this <coughs> level of detail but i don't think coming out and saying we don't want it is enough what we don't we have objections to it whereas what everyone is explaining is what we're trying to capture here that's the line that i'm talking about not walking a fine line between disappointing mr yeba or disappointing the agency that's determining it but giving them the basis for why and i think that's why it's crucial to get environmental expert comment comment here very similar to what EPA or DEP would expect it's not just the town personnel that work in these areas but some more more level of expertise on it but if they say no that doesn't mean we can't still in the further along in this process do that work anyway or get that work done anyway to for the next board to consider it what I mean by walking a fine line is don't just come out and say, no thanks, not interested. Put the, the level of detail that everybody has participated in describing, but that's already been worked on. I just think we need to expand on it and show it. There's a whole lot of words here, but show it. Show that it's not there. It's ridiculous to suggest that it's accessible to anything or that someone can walk somewhere to get their services and things like that. Show, you're talking about 200 units to get 20 to meet the plan that we're all, we're almost at. Show that, say that, of course, but don't come out and say, no thanks, and, and leave it at that. And I think this, this has a sufficient level of detail, and I think everyone's comment, even though I think the comment is, is, is great to, to be able to sort of 
further detail it you know put, put these other additional issues into it I, I think that's been very helpful mr. Missouri I think uh, in a simple way of looking at this is uh, the 40b law based on our current town setup allows in this case mr. Gibbon to make a proposal we're responding to the state saying is this law acceptable for completing the proposal and the state can say yes or no and then if they say yes it goes then to our board of appeals who will review it all of you will have an opportunity to again express your concerns and the history of the board of appeals has been to manage to scale things to a point that's acceptable and if it's not acceptable find a way of preventing it so i think you have to look at it from that way this doesn't tonight isn't a snap of the fingers okay it's not going to happen all we can do is produce accurate information about the lot to the state and let them go through their process and say yes or no and if they say no it's over and if they say yes then it goes to our board of appeals which moves the process along but it also is an opportunity to make changes and adjustment to what mr you have it's been proposing I think that's the way I look at it in a simplest view but I think it's past practice and it's been what we've dealt with in the past successfully and uh, I think that's what we have to do and uh, extending the time limit to help provide more information is not a bad thing if we can do that and all of your input of course is important but we just can't say no all we can do is produce information that would support a no based on allowing the state to make the decision that, that legally can make mr. O'Leary I mean, we're in a reactionary mode we're reacting to an application from a developer and that's the role we play uh, part of the fine line that we're walking is, uh, you know, 40 B's on the books for a reason because suburban communities haven't met their housing, affordable housing needs and therefore are being forced to do so under the state law to supersede local zoning. So we have to react to it. And, and again, all we can do is react to the proposal that's before us. And I don't think there's anybody that doesn't agree that what's before us is, you know, far too dense, far too high, uh, environmentally, uh, in a, an environmentally sensitive area, and we're going to point that out. Uh, but one of the things that does work well or in our favor is that Town of North Reading has a very good track record of uh, reacting to 40B applications. You know, over the years, we have been uh, very receptive to them. Uh, we've sat down. We've uh, mitigated the impact as to what the proposal. Not one proposal for a 40B that was made ever came to fruition in the form that it was presented. It has always been mitigated, downsized, uh, a lot of input from uh, neighbors and uh, you know right down to shingles lighting and what's going to be on the buildings and how many units of course are the big is the big issue but North Reading has a very good track record of uh, reacting to the 40b applications uh, handling it, handling them uh, very methodically uh, very carefully uh, being very sensitive to the impact that it's going to have on neighborhoods and the community as a whole and the state is aware of that you know we have been used as a model the model that we use here in North Reading has been suggested to other communities to, to use in handling the 40B applications. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for, if the state decides that this is a suitable site, and again, we're not saying that it is, a, based upon the proposal, we're saying basically it's not a suitable site. Uh, but if the state were to determine that it is a suitable site for affordable housing, then the applicant has an opportunity to <coughs> file an application with the Zoning Board of Appeals, and at that point, there'll be plenty of public input and opportunity for it, and there'll be a lot of discussion in relation to it, and I, I can, I almost assure you that if they do get the state okay to move forward, what's being proposed is not what you're going to see. So, please. Sandy Valenti, 6 Hayward Farms Lane. Here we are again, Steve. Yes, Another indeed. 40B at this end of town. <laughs> um, I, I think what you're hearing from folks is that the letter is full of facts. I would not, as an English major and business leader, I would not call it tight. I would not really call it compelling, and I think that's why Andrea asked about legal counsel. 
you know, people are in the profession of writing things that are convincing. And while factual, I'm not sure that gets at the heart of what we all hope to provide in comments. Yes, when it gets to ZBA, there's the chance to come talk about fencing and all the stuff we talked about at Doug Strong's property. But I think the people in this room would like to see it not get that far if we have a shot. And if our shot is to provide our best commentary, this does not feel tight to me. And I think that's maybe what you're kind of hearing if this is the, you know, the town has to be careful. We're not at 10%. But if we're clear about, you know, we should show it, I think what you're getting at is let's be crisp. Let's make it clear. That is so long, people are going to get bored reading it. And, uh, and so I know you need facts. You've got to find the balance between wording it tightly and in a compelling style, but being um, you know, factual enough that you don't appear not in my neighborhood snobby. So I just would suggest that some expertise around tightening it and making it compelling and that it's clear that we're not wild about these things, that's it's not that clear to me. So I don't know. If so we, the, one of the reasons after we were speaking this afternoon that we would like a little more time. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wrap things up, okay? And then we'll kind of tie into what you're saying. Um, I'm not disagreeing with you. It could be definitely a little more tighter. And we'll, we'll go back and we will consider that. I'm more concerned about, you know, where do we go from here? So what we have done in the last few weeks is um, we've gone up to the State House. I've talked with Representative Jones, I've talked with Senator Tarr, and they took us along to go meet with the Secretary of Housing and Economic Development, the new one that just took place, so uh, he just um, took over for Secretary Ash, Secretary Kinley, and he's a wonderful man. Um, you know, we gave a small presentation about the community, along with Mr. O'Leary just explained to you about our, our thick history about how we work with 40Bs. We welcome them. And we give an explanation about, you know, we went through the right process. We use, you know, since Governor Baker has come into office, he's talked about best practices. He's really him at home on best practices. And he's welcomed all communities to go to the State House, get involved in these best practices. And they do use North Reading as an example of best practice on how to do a 40B. So what we're trying to do is advocate to them to let us do what we know what to do. The ink on our HPP, is barely dry it's six months old allow us to execute to that housing production plan because it it is good it's if we do a 40b with on within the housing production plan there will be access to services there will be access to transportation there will be access to jobs and walking distances and so on and so forth all the things that we're talking about here today but you know what you learn is that in the housing side of all this they want housing and they don't particularly care that this doesn't quite fit in our housing production plan. Um, and the way it's worded to us and explained to us is when it gets to them, they just look at the site and say, is this suitable site? Could a 40B fit on this site? They're not looking at the density. They're not looking at the magnitude of this project. They're just looking at the site. Is it suitable? Every site's suitable, as Mr. O'Leary's talked about is it gets negotiated down into what fits best there. I'm with you. I want to know. I'm just speaking frankly. I want to know because we did the right thing. North Reading did the right thing. Not only did we get $15,000 from the state, but we also invested our own personal taxpayer money to do this plan, which we believe in, allow us to execute to the plan. I'm not going to give up on that argument. I believe in that plan, and I think it's the right thing. But there's another thing. We have been working towards other plans. We had an RFP on our agenda for several weeks ago about senior housing. We know we need to address it. We need to keep doing it. And this shouldn't derail us from doing it. And we need to get even probably more active in it. Because if we can get ours into the queue as well, you know, we may reach our 20%. We may reach our uh, ten, four-tenths of a percent that we need. And then we can reach safe harbors. So we have other options, okay? But this is where we are. He's certainly ahead of the game on and where we are with our own particular project that I just referenced. But we have to keep advocating with our legislation to fight for us. That's what they're there for. And I also ask you to, to continue to keep sending in those comments because they do matter. Because when I saw 
the director of uh, um, HD, HDCD, she said, oh yeah, I have a massive box. And I asked her, I said, encourage her to make sure she goes through every one of them. And that's another reason why we're asking for this extension, to give them time to do the right thing as well. So we, we are here. We, we got it, we got the message, and we're trying to do our best. The process, though, as I started early, at the beginning of this, you know, 40B plans are not really planning. If you go back and really read it, it doesn't even fit within the whole definition of a planning. Okay. So with that, I'd like to close out this particular agenda item, unless there's any other board member comments. Just one quick. I'll put you on the just, clock. Just one quick is, is I agree. It, it's dense. It's, it's, it's very lengthy. It's, it, goes, it goes contrary to say it in three pages or less. However, I think it supports the idea as to why this isn't the right spot. We're not opposed to uh, 40B, but this isn't the right spot. This not just right spot. for one reason, two reasons, but for a myriad of reasons. And I think that's what it's trying to detail here. Um, and if, if they still are going to move forward and allow this, then we have to put in those other considerations. Then if you're going to, you need to address this, 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 and this. And there are really a number of reasons if they do move forward that are detailed there as well. Yeah, the CBA, you, you need to make sure you, the community gets out to those meetings. One of the requests I'd like to ask um, town administrator is, uh, I did speak to a few folks that don't have the ability to get to meetings at night, but they wanted to watch them at home. And the ZBA meetings are not televised. And they would like to know when we go through this process that we televise these ZBA meetings associated with 20 Elm Street. Or we should really have, I think, you know, that's actually a good suggestion. Is anytime you have a development going on in any of these communities, those meetings should be public because it's hard, we know, it's hard for the folks to get here to those meetings. But I'd like us to consider it and figure that out for them. Uh, I think it's a, a, a good request. Um, in the Greens, there's a lot of people living in that area. They just can't get here. They should have the right to at least see it at all. So I'd like to see if there's a way we can accommodate that as well. Thank you for coming tonight. I do appreciate it. And um, your letters are very important. And the feedback. Senator Tarr, um, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, Senator thank you for all your Senator comments. Tarr. Really, I, I was reading I through the comments. To thank you all for that. A lot of your comments were very thoughtful yes. and uh, they were great. It's important. Just, so just a note on the comments that as of Friday, we had 300 pages worth of resident comment and it was still coming in. So we'll forward all of that along it's to Mass important. Housing. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys aren't going to stick around for the bin hits and all the other stuff? <laughs> No, I hope so too. This was Take care of yourself. Yeah. This was fun. Yeah. No, no, no. We'll follow up. We'll follow up with the Digital uh, Watch. Thank you. I don't have my iPad. I'm trying to read it on my phone. So. Great. Okay. Next on the agenda. Thank you very much is to review the, let's see, I can't see, review the community plan for the wall that heals. Hey, Bobby. I assume Mrs. Bagner's here for this subject. Again, Mrs. Bagner, you got some explaining to do. I have, um, I have <laughs> What movie? Come on, what show? Oh, yeah. I love Lucy. I love Lucy. <laughs> no I love that. Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Good evening. Oops. Sue Magner, Veterans Director. Okay, um, the last time I was here, we were discussing the bringing the wall that heals and that there was over 120, uh, roughly about 120 applications nationwide um, that were um, submitted uh, for a request for towns and cities to um, host the wall that heals. Um, North Reading was chosen as one of the towns. Um, Bellingham was another one, and the other one closest to us would be Conway, New Hampshire. All the other ones are down south um, and out west. So um, what I didn't, and I apologize, didn't fail to mention, there is a cost that comes with this. So let me, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna briefly go through my slides again real well, quick. Do, do we, um, no disrespect, but do we need to go through the slides? Nope, nope, I'm going, I'm, I'm scanning through them. I, there's okay. just one, there's a couple that you need to see, so the new ones that I have. Go right ahead. So. Oh, we didn't see these. 
this, yeah, I just added these on. Okay. So, okay, so the walk, and, and the reason being I didn't mention it was because I wasn't requesting from the town any monies to support this project. Um, so the project is actually coming in, it's uh, from the 15th to the 18th. The cost of the wall, the, the, this wall, unlike the other walls that are 250 feet in length, this one's a 375 foot wall with a 53 foot um, educational slash museum um, <coughs> unit on wheels. And the cost is at $10,000 for the project to bring it in. Um, I've been saving a lot over the years for this project. So I do have monies um, from the gift account that would support it. Um, but, and that's at the worst case scenario if I couldn't get any support from anybody. That being said, I'm already getting people that want to support it. And I'm not talking just this town. So, um, in addition, um, as we're aware, the, um, there were monies gifted to the Veterans Gift Account um, from under Charles, An for Ch from Charles Anderson. Um, I've already um, spoken with, emailed uh, both uh, Attorney Reinhold and, um, and Pastor Hughes um, on, on, I CC'd him on this, and to define the word needy. My definition of need is, uh, the, definition of, uh, the definition of needy is actually a broad term, as we're all aware. So to me, this is honestly a need for not only our Vietnam veterans and their families, it is a need for the town, it is a need for the, for the state of Massachusetts, it is a need for these children to have some education and understanding of what this all is all about. I look at it in my eyes, you see a child looking up at the, at the wall and all they're going to say, wow, this is nice, this is really cool, what is it? And nobody has any idea what it is. And I'm, it's sad to say, we have a lot of adults out there that are in the same situation. So, so um, with that, I'm still waiting to hear back from her, but like I said, I'm ready to rock and roll with getting support from businesses. BFWs, DAVs, not just from the town of North Reading, but everywhere around throughout. So, I see the ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and then it's ten thousand dollars plus everything below that number. Okay, so the flyover I'm working on, I need to find out what a cost would that would be. I do have some people that I know. Are we flying over like an F-15, or are we flying over an, a 1961? I have prop. no idea. This is what I, I. This is all part of my homework to do okay. this, and I do have people to talk. Uh, F fifteen is going to be in the millions of dollars. So, well, it, and like I said again, this is this is where this is all going to come into play for doing some homework and finding out because there are times where they will do flyovers if they have the ability. And I have spoken with a few in the military yeah. as well that they have done them um, at no cost. So, yeah. depending I mean, on what I, the situation is. So, uh, if they very much money. in support of this project. I just. I didn't know there was a cost associated with, but and again, if it's more than ten thousand dollars, I think we need to probably get our hands around that and figure out because you have done a great job raising some money, and I know we've had some wonderful fortune by Mr. Anderson uh, and his family mm -hmm. uh, donating, and but I think you know we're gonna spend it all in one. Oh no, maybe no, no, a little no. dangerous. No, because because what I'm okay. So Mr. Macera, I'm for sorry. instance, the o the only additional. Ex Expense that we would actually be looking at, I mean, major expense, would, if it comes to it, would be to fly over. And again, that's a determination. Can we do it? If we can't, we don't do it, okay? You go on with the rest of the ceremony. There's no, there's no mandate to have a flyover, okay? So it would oh, be okay. nice. Okay. We would love to have a flyover. All right, so there's no mandate. It's not a mandate. Gotcha. These are suggested, suggested ideas. Okay. So um, I know I can get somebody to sponsor the wreaths, which, there's like probably about 10, depending on how many towns want to acknowledge lost Vietnam, veterans that were killed in action in their town, they would acknowledge those four or five, whoever they are, and they would have a wreath and place the wreath over. That's typically how we would do it at the ceremony at the wall. One wreath per town. So if, if they even do it. And the, the wreaths are, are not a, a, a cost. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's, that's nothing. I can make those for you. So I don't have an issue with that. 
Um, the memorabilia, again, that would be depending on what I would raise. And it is still more discussion to talk to um, um, to Cynthia, who is the who runs the or, or is the one that I follow up with for all the issues and concerns as far as how much of it would have to go to their to their end versus how much of it we're allowed to keep for proceeds. There may be just a portion we're allowed or a portion we have to give to them. That's a possibility. The only other major expense we have is a hundred number two pencils that I have to provide. That's Mr. Gilberto. Uh, Mr. Gilberto. So j just a note to clarify on the memorabilia. I know you've had some conversations with the uh, the Wall That Heals as an organization. Mm -hmm. They are not opposed to the town doing some sort of m uh, memorabilia availability, but it cannot be done at the site. Is that right. correct? Right, and I understand that. And then she and I, I we're going to talk about that because I'm looking also to see if maybe they provide provide it themselves for other people to purchase, which is a possibility. So it would be nice to have something that would acknowledge. North Reading, but the only mm -hmm. other major other expense, like I said, is a hundred number two, uh, number two pencils. So it's the ten thousand plus the number two pencils, um, and then that would be the only. That's the only major expense, Michael. That's the, the only. Well, in, the, the, well, in the police details. Excuse me, I'm getting to that. Oh, sir, did you have a question? It's exactly what you just brought up. You are talking about the biggest expense, and you, the last time we talked, we were gonna, you were going to try to get a handle around police details, because that'll be a town cost. Right, okay, so that, I'm going to know. I, I, I yeah, I am going to meet with the chief. I've already talked to the chief today. He and I are going to meet. They, the, the, um, uh, the Veterans Memorial uh, Funding, they do not require that. It is not a requirement. Like for instance, the night detail is volunteers. It is not a security detail. It is just somebody being there. So if somebody wants to come late in the middle of the night, because it's, illum it's illuminated, you know, all, all the way through 24 seven, if somebody wants to come in to look at it, they have the ability to go there at night. Some Vietnam vets are gonna feel like they wanna go at night. Um, the only, in, in my opinion, I mean, this is, uh, this wall is something that when it's on our property, we would not want it to be harmed. And with what's going on in the world today, you know, it's very possible without proper protection that that could happen. And I think we have to keep that in mind. We have a responsibility for that. I don't, I don't think we can just walk away from it. Oh, and, and, and I don't have it, I understand that, and that, that is something we can look into, but I don't think it's something any more than you would have, you know, your cruiser that's on on duty that night just happen, happen to make it a roundabout, I mean, any more than they would do anywhere else. Mr. Gilberto. Thank you, through you, Mr. Chairman. So, I think that the thinking was, we had some great news to present in December relative to the town being selected. Um, we're certainly pleased that we've been selected, but that we do want to be, be transparent and make sure that folks are aware that there are some expenses that are associated with it. I don't think any of us sitting here feel that there's any reason, or that they are a reason not to host the wall here, and we have identified funding sources in place. I think perhaps the most important thing that the veterans agent and I wanted to bring to the board's attention is the town is being asked to sign a contract with the wall that heals as an organization to bring the wall here. And before we did that, we wanted to review this with you. Um, and we've done that and we've identified the areas where there will be some uh, in-kind or real costs that are associated with it and we have also identified funding sources. But prior to executing that contract, which we are being asked to do as soon as possible, we wanted to review that with the board. So does that kind of summarize? Yeah, because they, they, the in other words, the contract, they need it in hand by the, by the 21st. Do you have a motion? Do you need us to make a I motion? It doesn't need to be authorized. We no. just wanted to disclose it at this point. He signs all contracts. He's on the hook. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Mrs. That, that was my reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Mignapelli. So since it is being discussed and described and members of the community are listening, is there a way for the, how would they, if they wanted to contribute to this particular effort, how are they supposed to do that? 
how are people supposed to give money towards this cost or to to for this particular the wall that heals effort? So, so what's going to be happening? It's already been put it put in place in the paper um, with the initial with the initial um, acknowledgement of it um, that if anybody wants to donate, they can donate it to the veterans gift account, and if they would just put um, the 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 wall that heals or you know. Um, just put TWTH in the memo so I'll know it goes to that specifically and and then that will go into the gift account and, and be put into the specific um, um, er, um, area in, in the uh, the finance of the uh, veterans gift account for specifically for the wall. Okay, so a lot of people don't read the paper so just to make sure we no offense but a lot of people don't read Correct. the paper. So they would write a check to the Town of North Reading Veterans Gift Account. Correct. In making sure that they know TWTH yes. donation or the Wall That Heals donation Correct. on the check. And uh, sending it to well, Veterans that. Agent Sue Magner. Be specific. Address. <laughs> What's our address? 235 North, North Street. Street. Come on. I'm here all the time. 01864 for those of you that don't okay. know your zip code. So we do, we do, we would like to ask people if they're oh, able to, any little bit would help with this or towards this. Correct. And in addition, we'll, it will be on the website. Parks and Recreation will also put it in there. Oh, We've already great. put it in the Parks and Rec's um, new brochure that's coming out, the spring great. brochure. And um, in addition to that, we, w we are um, working with Parks and Recs right now because they're, they're working in collaboration with me on this. Um, so um, we're going to be putting up also on sites that people want to volunteer their time. They'll have the ability to do that, and there will be time slots set up for them to make it e really easy. Thank to you. To keep down, the, to minimize the uh, phone calls. Well, we'll invite you back when um, you know, when you get a little closer to the date to give us a little update. But oh, absolutely. Is there anything else you needed from us this evening? Nope. All I need to do is be able to sign that contract, get that check out to these Thank folks, you. so we can get this here. Appreciate your time this evening. Thanks thank for coming you. in so late. Now, thank you for joining us. Sure. Always a pleasure having you with us. Thank you, for uh, Thank you, Susan. And next on the agenda, You're we're welcome. going to discuss the 217 Main Street purchase and sale and its status. Mr. Gilberta. So, Mr. Chairman, uh, I have a brief statement that I'd like to offer relative to this uh, this property, and then um, I actually have uh, language for a motion that Council has sent to me that I'll, I'll read somehow into the record to be formally okay. made by Mr. Uh, the clerk. Get your so move for it. <laughs> Thank you uh, again through you Mr. Chairman. Since the acceptance of the town's conditional offer to purchase 217 Main Street in December, the town through its Department of Public Works has been further investigating the possible use of this property for municipal purposes including as a fire station. The investigation included a review of the property by an outside engineering firm. While the engineering firm has identified that the property appears to be in good condition and to have been well maintained, a closer review of the building by the firm's architect has revealed that the property does not meet the classification level required for it to be used as a fire station or public works facility. The building is believed to be suitable for other categories of use, presumably including its former use as a water bottling and distribution facility. An initial review indicates that upgrading the building classification to the level required for use as a fire station or public works facility would be cost prohibitive. Therefore, the town will not be pursuing this real estate acquisition further. We thank the sellers and their agents for their efforts and assistance throughout the process and wish them well in identifying the right buyer and the right use for the property. And uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, the uh, the motion that we'll offer, or we'll ask, we rec recommend be offered is as follows. Uh, I move that the town withdraw its previous conditional offer and that the town not enter into a purchase and sale agreement for 217 Main Street. Mr. Chairman, for the record show, I made that motion. Second. I got a motion by Mr. O'Leary, second, second by Mrs. Minupelli. Any more discussion, or any discussion, actually? So, I want to thank you for looking into this so quickly and I think us uh, taking the action that we did to have our consultants look into it quickly was the right right, right step in the process um, but the building is beautiful and it's sad that we're not going to be able to take the advantage of it uh, it 
it's a beautiful shape, and uh, certainly whoever ends up buying it will certainly be getting themselves a very nice quality building. So I want to wish the seller his, my, our best and uh, thank him for being patient all this time to allow us to get to this part in the process. So if there is no other comments, um, we'll move to a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Unanimous minus one. Okay. Next on the agenda, discuss town meeting dates for 2019. Mr. Masseri and I will not be discussing and we'll involved in this discussion. I'm <laughs> like <laughs> Mr. Goldberg. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, through you. I provided a, a substantial amount of information for the board, uh, both at a meeting in December as well as in this evening's packet um, uh, and via email, uh, relative to the dates that are uh, options for town meeting being held in June and October of this year. And uh, I'll, I guess I'll, I should start by saying uh, town meeting in June of last year approved changes to the town's charter which were ultimately approved by the legislature and the governor allowing for the meeting to be held on any day in June and any day in October not in conflict with a religious or civic holiday um, and in doing so we have quite a bit of latitude for establishing the dates for a town meeting I'll note this is not the hearing um, by charter, the, the select board is required to hold a hearing um, uh, by March, by the end of March, to establish the town meeting dates. This is an initial discussion to sort of generally understand the dates that we would be looking at for the meeting to be held. The town clerk, the finance director, and I have reviewed um, the uh, holidays that are scheduled uh, to take place, both civic and religious, in uh, June and October, um, based on available information uh, through uh, mainstream calendars. Uh, posted online and we identified a series of dates uh, as early as Monday June 3rd and as late as Saturday June 29th for the June town meeting and a series of dates as early as Tuesday October 1st and as late as Wednesday October 30th for the October town meeting date um, taking it a little bit more closely uh, we looked at sort of the practicality of some of the dates and um, the availability of um, uh, excuse me, the practicality of the dates when considering the, um, the work that goes into the, uh, the, many, um, the many departments that are charged with town meeting occurring and following up on the actions of town meeting. And we identified a series of, um, of dates that we're recommending as options. In the case of the June town meeting, the recommendation based on our conversation would be to have the meeting on Ju Tuesday, June 11th. And so that date is notable in that it is not Monday noon 3rd, not June 3rd, excuse me, which is the traditional date, first Monday of June that we've held the meeting. And it was intended to avoid a conflict with the uh, senior prom and grand march that occur at the middle high school facility. Um, the initial feedback that we got from the superintendent um, and his uh, senior personnel was any attempt that could be made to avoid that week altogether because of the pressure on the, on the facilities associated with graduation uh, would be appreciated. So that led us to move it to the next uh, week, Tuesday, June, um, in, in selecting the Tuesday date. And I believe the Monday was a uh, religious holiday, and that's why we could not choose that as a date. So it's also notable that it's my wife and I's wedding anniversary, so we can celebrate it with yeah, a lot of people. You know. On June 11th. June 11th. Yeah. <laughs> And then we, we did a similar exercise uh, for the October town meeting, although this is um, more focused on the delicate balance of the time between the two dates, meaning the June meeting and then the October meeting, the, uh, uh, any work that might be associated with the tax rate uh, being developed, the identification of and certification of free cash to close out the previous year. We factored all those things in together. We identified two potential dates, Tuesday and Wednesday, um, October 15th and October 16th. So I guess what we're kind of looking for is, is there any initial concern with those dates? And uh, if, if there was not, then we would move forward with posting a hearing at probably the first meeting, meeting in February and setting the date based on feedback from the public. Again, with the dates again? Sure. So uh, Tuesday, June 11th, and then Tuesday, October 15th, and Wednesday, October 16th.
makes sense. On Wednesday, you said? Th there were options for the board to choose from if you didn't want to have it on Tuesday. Okay. And again, with the, the Monday dates in October are not available so, for? So the way it falls, the week, the, the month begins on a Tuesday. So that right away kind of staggers things a bit. Um, I believe that Monday. We can have whatever we want now. Monday the 7th is a religious holiday. Monday the 14th is Columbus Day. Monday the 21st, I believe, is another religious holiday. So that's kind of what happened to the traditional schedule. So the earliest we would have been having it under the old charter language would have been Monday, October 28th. Shifting it over to Tuesday. If we could do it on a Monday, I'd rather do it on a Monday. Because now we're proposing Tuesday for all of these instead of, for both of these, that is, instead of sticking to at least a Monday, which is the familiarity of most of the Well, the 16th is actually on. a Wednesday. I know. So, you're going to look at, um, I don't know, when school gets up, well, school would have been, if we go more than two sessions. Late into June, mm -hmm. people exiting town. So you said those are all religious holidays now on Mondays in June? Yes, uh, n not all of them. Um, the Monday, June 3rd is not a religious holiday, but it is the evening of the Grand March. The next available Monday would be Monday, June 10th, and um, it, there is a uh, holiday known as, and I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, Wit Monday on June 10th, and it's identified as a Christian holiday. Google that, will you, Kate? I don't <laughs> <laughs> Wit Monday, W-H-I-T Monday. I must be a Monday, June 10th. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> Again, we're trying to interpret the charter language. I don't, I don't get that. Michael, what am I doing? Michael. It's, it's not on mine. I assume that the cutoff on October is related to the fact that you don't want to go too far down, and, and there you start to interfere with year end closing. Oh, with Monday? So that was something that we were factoring. That is fact. Yeah, in, in both yeah. those dates. Um, so I, I, I'm just reading from the information provided by the town clerk. Um, it is the day after Pentecost, also known as Whit Sunday or Whit Sunday, same word with two different spellings, commemorating the Holy Ghost descent on Jesus Christ's disciples according to the New Testament of the Bible. More. So June 10th looks good. That looks good. So we'll target Monday, June it's 10th, and bar, bar, I guess barring, barring any feedback at the public hearing, yeah. that's the day we would look at. We run and the, the schools, yes. Yeah, we got to check this. June 10th looks good. Okay, and then October. Uh, the 21st doesn't work, you said? Is that too late? Um, bear with me one moment, I apologize. The 21st is also identified as a Columbus Day is the week before. It is uh, Sim, Simchat Torah, which is a, a Jewish holiday that begins at sundown on Monday, October 21st. Oh, we'll be out of here by then. Um, uh, sundown in, so in is, California. Is there, are there any holidays on the 28th, Monday the 28th? Of June? October. I'm sorry, October, excuse me. You go that far up? October, that week? Too late. That's too late. I, I think that there's, there is some concern that it is yeah. so fairly late. I don't think the 21st would impact if it's a, you said it's sun, it's sunrise it's or sunset? Su that's sundown, that Monday. Sundown? I think that's late. That's late. You think 21st is late? I think that's late. What about the 7th again? Is that another holiday? Well, Again, we were just looking to buy themselves an extra week. The ninth is a Wednesday. That's you know, confirmed. The fourteenth 
Monday is Columbus Day. So seventh is seventh is Du uh, a Hindu holiday. Jane would never be able to make that meeting. <laughs> we know. I, yeah. I mean, I'm more inclined to traditionally keep right. it, right. You know, unless it's some compelling reason because we haven't got things right. ready to right. move it out. So, Seven. so, so should we do it on the set, October seventh? Yeah. Well, excuse me. My one concern with the seventh would be, do we have? Free cash certified by them because that can be a, a tight timeline uh, for closing out the We've previous had year. October town meetings yeah. earlier than that for as long as I've been on the board. I just and I don't ever recall having a problem with certification free cash. And I, I don't believe that we've had it happen at that point or later than that point in my time here. I'm just highlighting a concern that yeah. was expressed to me. I think the, the reason for pushing it out was the fact that June meeting comes up, summer comes on, and then August, and we head into September, and we're dealing with finalizing the warrant, and we kind of run out of time. Not so much that we've ever been concerned about the closing. I have no problem with reviewing the proposed. I mean, we're, do, we're doing this discussion so that we can take the dates back and review them. So I have no problem with reviewing that with the finance director and the town clerk. Okay, anything else on this subject? We're good? So we have June 10th and October 7th. And I think if we deviate on the 10th, I think we should do as much as we can in advance of that because we're off a schedule that we're normally accustomed to. So making sure that voting members know that. Well, so we're going to have a public hand. We have to have yeah. a public hand. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? So to clarify, June 10th and October 7th. Yes. Thank you. Appointments. So the Conservation Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's see here. Uh, once again, I'd like to just state publicly again that I appreciate everybody's uh, newfound interest in the uh, Conservation Commission. Yeah, I see that. So it's. Um, great thing and, and as a result of that uh, board at our last meeting uh, was willing to entertain associate membership now as far as associate memberships go I mean, we have had them in the past years past there's been a, a wane waning of interest in this uh, commission over the years so we haven't had associate members for quite a long time now the conservation commission has the authority to appoint associate members themselves uh, I conveyed to conservation agent that I believe that the board would prefer to continue and appoint associate members through this methodology so that you know if there's going to be a farm league it'll be a farm league based upon you know appointments made by the board so people will be elevated to the full uh, membership uh, you know through this process as opposed to you know, hand picking their own uh, successors and I've seen in the past where that could run into some conflicts uh, uh, where the board who's seated at the time would not necessarily be in favor of recommendation being made by the Conservation Commission as to who should fill a vacancy. So I said if we keep it within the appointing authority's jurisdiction, uh, we can steer clear as best we can of those types of situations. And um, the only other suggestion that I would make is again that we make the appointments and again make the appointments for one year. So it's people's interest, um, if they wane, we can have the authority or the ability to backfill the associate positions on an annual basis and renew people's um, uh, appointments on that particular basis. So if there's no objection, um, if I didn't misstate our position or what our position will be, is that we'd like to continue to, to make the appointments. Um, I can move forward with a recommendation. Um, go ahead. I just have a question. Just I I agree with that. I'm just uh, does the chair though have the ability? So the associate sits in, right? Doesn't vote unless the chair designates that person. No, not even vote. Person. No. In this particular case, we have not adopted the chapter and first way. Associate members are only there as observers. They can participate in the again. The, the chair will allow them to participate in discussion, ask questions, and all the rest. But even in the absence of another member, they don't get elevated. It's not like an alternate. 
So yeah, they have no a, voting authority. That's what I was going to, I, I was wondering, because I think it, it's in Robert's rules that a chair could designate an yeah. associate to make a quorum or make, be, make No, no, the so associate members are not, are not allowed to help create a quorum okay. and are not allowed to vote. Okay. So shouldn't we consider, where we now know that this is a very important committee, that maybe we start one person, one year term, the other one two year term, and Maybe try to get them staggered so they're not all at the same time. I think, uh, again, we haven't had this much interest in years. Um, and now we have one, two, three, four. We have five. Uh, one of the members, uh, one of the individuals here has, has asked to be taken out of consideration. Uh, so that we have five people. Uh, we'll be appointing three. Uh, again, after discussions with the conservation agent, you know, let, let's do it for one year and renew them every year. So that again, as people are showing up and continue to show their interest, that's a good thing. Uh, and if they decide that they don't want to participate for whatever reasons, uh, they can vacate the position. We can backfill. And again, we can change. We can stagger these next year too if we find that that's what we want to do. So but in this particular case, uh, I said let's just do it for the one year, three people for one year, and then uh, we can deal with it on an annual basis. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we had a lot of discussion with. Uh, uh, the chair and uh, another member of the uh, Conservation Commission, as well as the conservation agent. So based on that, Mr. Chairman, I will be uh, recommending to the board that we appoint Randall Mason, uh, Lauren Bashara, and Thomas Sanchez. So Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of the following names for appointment as associate members of the Conservation Commission for terms to expire on December 31st, 2019. And we've discerned three openings. Uh, Michael Uhl, Randall Mason, John Lape, uh, Lauren Bashara, Thomas Sanchez. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Mignapelli. And, and again, I'm recommending uh, Mason, Bashara, Sanchez. Mr. Masseri. I recommend Randall Mason, Lauren Bashara, and Thomas Sanchez. Mrs. Mignapelli. Randall Mason, Lauren Bashara, and Thomas Sanchez. And the chair votes Mason, Bashara, and Sanchez. And the clerk does the same. Uh, Mason, Bashara, Sanchez. Oh, I thought you already did it. I'm no, sorry. I just let you know what the recommendation <laughs> was. I miss him, miss her. Okay. And one absence. All right. Thank you for running that down. And thank you for those who uh, are actively getting involved in the Conservation Committee. It's fantastic for the town. Uh, next is the sign that. ABCC 2019 renewal certificate or certification. Mr. Chairman, I move to sign the ABCC 2019, that's the Alcohol Beverage Control Commission 2019 renewal certification. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? I heard all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you for attending. Thank you very much. All right. Legal bills. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for November 2018 in the amount of $12,281.29 as follows. Copelman and Page PC General, $1,911.29. Copelman and Page PC Labor, $9,044. Uh, Thompson West Publishing, $1,326. Total $12,281.29. Second. A motion a second by Mr. Masseri. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Special counsel for Mr. Chairman, I move to authorize payment to Furman Gregory Deptula for invoice number 11373 in the amount of $92,243.50 and to authorize payment of $110,000 for a retainer to cover legal services, expenses, and expert witness costs and initial mediation fee from January through June 2019. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Mignapelli. Any discussion? Not heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Next is the minutes for December 3rd, 2018 executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 3rd, 2018 executive session minutes as written. 
motion is second by Mrs. Mignopelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. December 11th. 2018. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 11th, 2018 executive session minutes as written. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. December 14th. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 14th, 2018 regular session minutes as written. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 14th, 2018 executive session minutes as written. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And the executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 17th, 2018 executive session minutes as written. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Town Administrator's Report. Uh, let's see. I have another one. Oh. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the December 17th regular session minutes as written. Oh, jeez. My eyes. I get an appointment every week. <laughs> second. I, second. Okay. Motion and second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Executive session of the 17th. I've already done. Done. Now the town administrator's report. You don't have one? Very good. I'll take the motion to adjourn. I'll be very brief, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Okay. Uh, I just would like to welcome a couple of new employees to uh, the town, particularly the Department of Public Works. Uh, Corey <coughs> Carr has been hired to the per position of maintenance craftsman for the water division of the Department of Public Works. And Dennis Daigle has been hired to the position of heavy equipment operator for the water division of the Department of Public Works. Uh, also, during the past couple fiscal years budget process, we have held vacant positions, uh, the positions of uh, water treatment plant operators, two water treatment plant operator positions in the DPW water division. After discussions with the union, we've made modifications to the job description and title for those positions to establish them as maintenance craftsman positions, and we are intending to um, move forward with advertising those positions. Uh, I note that only because uh, those positions were previously held aside in a reserve within the water enterprise budget. However, we'll be moving forward with filling those positions uh, during the course of the remainder of this fiscal year. Again, the fund had, funds have been budgeted for and are available for the positions to be filled. Finally, I know that there was a discussion at the last meeting or the meeting before the last meeting regarding uh, pursuing um, a, a uh, ban on plastic uh, bags, uh, and that's something that I intend to take up with uh, at a future meeting of uh, area town administrators and town managers to better understand what their communities have gone through with regard to that. And that concludes my comments. Mr. O'Leary? All set. Mr. Mr. Happy New Year. Uh, just as I mentioned before regarding the water, it's essential that we uh, get the dialogue go back going with uh, handover and that we make sure they follow through in answering the questions and uh, the changes to the uh, original uh, the yeah. not the uh, the original uh, change of scope change of scope notice of project change notice of project change right yeah gotcha is there any more progress with the Property what I meant is the DEI effort. Yeah. It's been still some ongoing discussions. We're going to be sitting down with them shortly. Just come to some final commitment. Yes. Good. So, anything else, Mr. Masseri? The bottom line is that uh, as we move this forward to keep it on a reasonable schedule, yeah. we have to stay on top of it. Perfect. Mr. Mignopelli. I'm not sure who we're going to replace you with as a full time. Uh, to do that work. I hope things are better than they've been in the past. <laughs> you probably will be. Yeah, probably will be with, yeah. the, with all the effort put into it. And I'm sorry you're, um, I'm sorry you're going, and I know you've been a real dedicated servant as well. So, and you've been a huge help to me, and a huge support to me. It's been an honor working with you and all of you. So. Okay, change is good, but I'm glad Mr. Masseri and I are making the announcement early. Encourage people to come out and run for these positions. Not only 
for Board of Selectmen, but I'm sure the school committee, I know Mr. Webster has announced that he's not going to run for re-election. He's moving out of town. So we'll have definitely have an opening as well in the school committee. So um, one of the things that we are doing in the financial planning team is to try to document a lot of the processes we use for, for example, how we do a revenue plan. You know, we just want to get it documented. Um, so as we have these changes, we don't lose sight of these really important functions that we, we've sort of put in place. You know, a lot of us have been around long enough that we just kind of know it. But now we're trying to formalize it. It's been a great, it's been a good process. Work with the school committee, the FinCom, and everyone to, to document those processes, so uh, we don't lose sight of the way we do because we've learned a lot of lessons that we just don't want to lose sight of. Well, I know yourself, Mr. Chairman, and Mr. Masseri, and Mr. Webster too. Certainly earned your time off <laughs> because uh, we couldn't afford point, right? couldn't afford the service that you provided to the community if we had to pay it. So it's. Yeah. Uh, Congratulations on your decision, and I guess my condolences to your wife. She's going to have more of you, and you I don't know. But, you know, yeah, we, we get what she wishes for. Thank your wives. Yeah, thank the wives. Thank the family. Because right. it's, a, it's a tremendous sacrifice. I'm going to work. They've been so. made over the years. But now you'll have some skilled people in town meeting asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to keep you guys on. And, and answering. Right. Answering. <laughs> answering for us. Right. I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Aye. 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 Aye.